Here's 25 plus spring and Easter DIYs for 2022. We're starting off with a pine swag and we're going to add some of this burlap ribbon. This came from burlap.com. I'll have the links in the description box if you're interested. These are some floral bouquets that I got from the thrift store. I've got a variety of them pretty much in the same colors. A couple of them are duplicates and we're going to use those. Here's some more thrifted florals. This is Ashland. I think that came from Michaels or Hobby Lobby. These are thrifted as well. You know, almost everything I have is thrifted. So we're gonna start off with this swag. I'm gonna put the link up here in the corner so you can see the other um, project that I did with it and see how I put it down on that board. Here is some thrifted eucalyptus garland. I'm gonna have several different pieces of that. These are some spring looking picks that I had that are kind of leftovers. Pretty much it's all thrifted. I'm going to show you how I chose to put this down. Now you can do it any way you want. And don't worry about that being pine underneath. Don't let that deter you from watching this video because we're going to cover every bit of that up. So I'm going to use my pine branches to wrap around the end of this garland and cut the little plasticky end off. Nothing there that we that is going to add any value to this. So I'm just going to cut it off. And then I'm going to kind of twist it back and forth from the left to the right, left to the right, so that I cover up a lot of this greenery with the eucalyptus garland. We want this to look springy. I mean, you know, pine trees and evergreens, they're here all the time, thus being evergreen. But we want this to be more springy looking, more spring inspired. And so this is a really good way to take a piece that you already had, really stretch that dollar, and make something pretty that could last potentially all year. So I'm just going to keep adding this. Now when I got this thrifted garland, it was cut into pieces. Um, there are a couple of strands that are whole and there are some that are cut into little pieces. So I'm just, with that in mind, I'm finding the pieces that look like they'll fit for what I need. You can use whole pieces and you can certainly find uh, floral garlands at Dollar Tree um, and at the thrift store. So just look for them. I always get mine off season. I've had this garland since probably November and I've been hanging on to it. When I saw it, I saw the potential and it is fantastic quality. I mean, it is really nice quality. So I'm just going to make sure that I have it, you know, kind of extending out the sides a little bit and laying on top of everything. I like to put the greenery down first and then start adding the florals because I want my base to be nice and lush and I love green. I love the greenery. So I'm doing the same thing to the bottom as I did on top. I know I'm a little bit out of camera. It's kind of difficult because my, ter my table is not very um, big in front of me. It's a long table side to side, but in front of me I don't have a whole lot of room to work. So kind of playing around with my monopod and try to get the camera where you can see everything. I know some people are really annoyed when they can't see everything. So just use your imagination. What I'm doing on the top, all I'm doing on the bottom. And you can see here, it's nice and full. Now I only have two of these, so I'm gonna add one to the top and one to the bottom. And they're going to be going in opposite directions. It's almost like mirrored, if you imagine a line down the center of your, of the um, arrangement here then I'm going to do the same thing on both ends. It's going to somewhat mirror what's going on on the top and on the bottom. So that may help you because I know you can't see what I'm doing down there. All right. Now you see. You can use any picks you have, and Dollar Tree has a variety of really pretty picks. Um, generally, I don't know if they have all of their spring out yet, but, you know, I'm working right now with what I have, and these are things I already had, so I suggest that you do the same thing. Think of things that maybe you used at Christmas that could also be used in the spring. So I'm adding in these picks, and I'm just going to kind of go back and forth. One a little bit lower on the right than it is on the left, and etc. all the way down. I do have some pieces that are kind of clipped apart that I used in a wreath and I'll show you how to fix that so that you can use that in a thicker piece. It's very um, simple but sometimes when we're doing things it, you kind of get overwhelmed so you, you don't 
the simplest things seem to escape you, you know, you know how it is. But I don't want you to give up. If you're doing a project and you go, oh, I don't have that much greenery, there's no way I can do that. You certainly can. Use a smaller piece of garland. You could even use, you could even use an old branch from an old Christmas tree. It's that, that would be that simple. Okay, so I'm going to take these three pieces and I'm going to wind their wires around each other. Just like this. And then now I have another pick. Now this one is, does not have like five or six pieces like the other ones, but that is okay. As long as we have a representation of that on both sides, I think it looks good. So just be careful if you've got really thin wires that you don't, you know, poke yourself, hurt yourself. I know a lot of us are thin skinned and we don't have a lot of collagen left. I'm almost 50, you know, I'm not too far from that. So I know how it is. Plus I'm fair skinned and we, we tend to get boo-boos pretty easily. You'll see lots of my videos with band-aids on my fingers. But I kind of get in a certain mood when I'm doing this and my mind sort of takes. So yeah, my mind goes to another place and I just kind of uh, go with the flow and uh, throw all caution to the wind. All right, I love these. These are really pretty, but it's a different texture and I like that. I think that's gonna add some interest and it's kind of a little flyaway feature and you'll see it again. I'm, I'm sorry, but there it is. I just overlaid it and put it a little bit further down because we're gonna work from the very tips toward the center with these pieces that I don't have a lot of. So I'm just gonna move this up and show you that we're gonna do the same thing down here. I just kind of, you know, fluff it out just a little bit so it's all has a little bit of dimension in it instead of laying completely flat. And at some point after you have wound these branches around the other pieces, you will have areas that are pretty well, pretty tight, tight enough that you can just shove the pick in there without wrapping anything around it. And I love that. It kind of just hangs on to the rest of the stuff you got in there. So now I'm going to move on to my roses and these beautiful peach roses. I'm going to put these in threes because they make a bigger impact if you put them in groups. They are a little bit varied. Some are different than others. You could certainly do this with um, any type of flower you like, and you could use three different flowers instead of using three of the same thing. But like I said, I'm trying to use the things that I have. And uh, because, you know, you can't go out and buy new things if you still have a house full of stuff, right? Or a craft stash that's big as a mountain. So I've got to work through the things I have. And I'm so glad because when I find things thrifting, I pick them up because I really like them. So why not use them, right? I mean, why are we hoarding them if we're not using them, right? Okay, so now I'm gonna move on to the next flower, the next type that I have here. And I don't have very many of these. I think these are dahlias. Are these dahlias? Some of you probably would know better than I do. And I'm just gonna add those here and there. Then I have one stray white one, and I'm putting that there. Then I have these little, they're like um, seed pods or I don't know. It's just a bunch of different random little seedy looking things. Or maybe little flower buds. And then there's some other greenery that's got a little more of the bluish tint. And I'm adding those in. And I'll just continue to do this all over, filling in what looks right. The greenery that is similar, I try to keep with those groupings of the three roses. And then I have these little, they almost look like a berry. I put those in there and then get down to my pieces that I only have one of, like this beautiful rose. And it's colored a little bit differently, but I really think it gives some visual impact as well as this one. Very pretty. You got a lot of depth in there with the lighter and the darker colors. And then I have these really pretty white looking picks. And they were thrifted. You cannot get these at Dollar Tree. Hey, but Dollar Tree's stepping it up. They're charging us a little more money, but I believe the quality should be reflected. At least that's my dream and my hope. We can dream, right? All right, so I'm just going to continue around. And see, I have one little pick here. And then I have another little one pick. And I'm just going to put that in there. Because now that I've had my groupings in there, I can see where I need to add extra pieces. And where it needs to be a little more filled out. And that's what you do. 
Now it's on this backing for a reason. It makes it easier to manipulate, to work with, to hang. And it also gives you the opportunity to use this as a centerpiece or to hang it as a swag on your door or against your wall, which is, makes this very versatile. I absolutely love this. I love it. The colors are just perfect for my taste. Now I'm gonna take 18 inches of this burlap dot com ribbon this is actually a linen and cotton blend ribbon i do believe and it is a beige and cream colored stripe it complements this beautiful farmhouse piece perfectly i think i'm going to cut these into dovetails each one of these also all four of them and i've decided that there's so much going on with the flowers here i don't feel it necessary to put a bow you can certainly do that if you would like but what i'm going to do is going to be a little different but i think it still softens and complements the piece so we're going to fold it exactly in half and then we're going to go down a few inches the bigger the farther down you go with your loop the bigger the loop's going to be and the shorter the tails and I'm a little out of frame, but you see here, there's my loop, there's my two tails. I'm going to use a zip tie to close these off. You can use floral wire, pipe cleaner, um, a little, if you get some strong jute, you can use that. Whatever you want to use. And then just fluff it out a little bit. Just twist it around, fluff it out, and get it ready to be made into a pick. And this is where I'm just making sure that the size is right and that I like it. These are some little skewers that I got when I was out thrifting. I thought they would be good for crafting and they're really good for these. Little hot glue right in the center of the ribbon and then after it dries, I'm gonna do each one like that. And then after they are dried and nice and tight on there, you can go ahead and decide where you wanna put your little ends. It's such a pretty way. And, and you know, like I had referenced to you before, a lot of people do not care for bows. They don't care for bows. But I think that this is a nice way to put that ribbon in there and really give you some more softness and accentuate your colors and really scream farmhouse. I mean, that stripe to me really says farmhouse. And I love this ribbon. So I'm going to have that linked and burlap.com. And then one final piece right here in the end. Just add a little hot glue to the end of the picks if you need to, to hold them in place. But for me, I've got so much going on in here, they stayed nicely. And I think this is a good color combination. What do you think about this beautiful piece? I love it. All right, so give it a final look over, add where you need to add, take things away where you need to take things away. And then any of those little pieces of greenery that are left, if you don't want them to show, push them back down into the wreath, just like I'm doing right here. Very easy to do. Just twist them and poke them back down in there. No sense cutting them off because you can use this again. So here we have it hanging as a swag that you could use on your wall or your door. This is how it would look. Very lush and full and beautiful. Do you like these colors? Do you prefer like pink, yellow, blue? What colors do you do in the springtime? I love this because they are warm colors and for me, I love warm colors. I love that in my rustic home. It looks great with the wood doors and the wood trim and our wood floors. It's very warm and inviting. I really like it. And this is my new background. What do you think? I just bought the pieces for my background right from Goodwill. Perfect. Okay, so here we use it as a centerpiece. I've just laid it down here. You can add candles if you would like, but I've just put my candles behind it just to show you how pretty and full this would be just laying down. It's not very tall, so it would be great to be able to look across. Wouldn't this be beautiful for an Easter dinner? Or an Easter brunch is so cheerful and pretty you could even add some Easter egg picks in there if you wanted to use this at Easter time a lot of options we're going to use some of these rub-on transfers from Dollar Tree and they just peel right off of that paper backing 
They are beautiful. They have a spring motif. We're going to use two of these little wooden boxes. Just one for this transfer though. So I'm going to take little parts and sections of this one sheet to go all the way around this box. I started off using my Mod Podge squeegee, but it does not give enough pressure. So I do recommend that you switch to either a, um, there's these Cricut type tools at Dollar Tree. Get one of those. They're harder and it works better because you really want to make sure you burnish that down to get a nice finish where everything sticks just like this. You can see it's hanging over just a little bit on the W. Not a problem. You can press that down and just sand it right off. Pretty much it scrapes right away when you touch it. And I'm going to do that on the edges too just to make it look like a stamp rather than a transfer. I love this little bicycle. Very springy. Now I'm going to move to another part of the transfer. And you don't have to be concerned about it reaching all the way to the edges. I wanted to be sure that I could use this one transfer on the entire thing. So there are going to be some spots that look blank, but we're going to fill those in at the end. So if you start to raise it up slowly and you notice some is still stuck to the paper instead of on your project, just lay it back down and go ahead and apply a little more pressure. And then I'm just sanding it off like I did the rest of it. I'm going to move around to another section and keep going. So this box has four sides that you can see and a bottom and an open top. So we need four areas to cover this box. And I think that this looks great. I love these little wooden boxes from Dollar Tree. The color is already beautiful. The grain is gorgeous. I didn't feel the need to put any stain on it because honestly, I don't know that you would be able to see all of the light colors if we used a dark stain. So this is fresh and light colored. I think it's very pretty. Moving on, we have enough here for another side. Don't be concerned if it tears or if there's some pieces that are kind of rough looking. It's just going to give it an aged look and that is okay. That is fine. It's going to look beautiful and shabby chic and rustic. See, I'm taking this butterfly that had a little bit of damage and I'm just taking one of those wings to put in a, a little empty spot on the bottom of the flowers. And then a word that was left over, I'm going to take that word and put it right there. Don't be concerned about the band-aids. I've been doing some work on my carpet. We're pulling up carpet and working on getting new flooring, so I've torn my poor little fingers to pieces. But this is how it looks so far. And I'm going to find another piece that's on the transfer paper still and just rub that down on that side. And that's so simple. So very simple. You can use any transfers you like. So for the other box, we're going to use this old calendar from Dollar Tree. So if you still have your calendars and don't know what to do with them, pull them out. This particular one I love because of the flowers. So I'm going to take out July 22 and pull that calendar out and then decide how much we're going to need to go on the box. So it's just under three inches. And I'm going to measure here on my paper on the illustrations right about three inches. I'm going to do one on the bottom, one in the middle, and one in the top. And this will give us an area and a little kind of guideline where we can put the ruler down and then make a nice clean line with a rotary cutter. Very simple. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side and then you can do the bottom and the top as well if you would like. So you have a bigger choice, uh, you know, variety of which piece you want to use. Now, I'm using this dark gray because Oftentimes when you have a lighter background and you put a calendar page down, you can see those black lines through it when you Mod Podge it. So if you go ahead and start off with a dark color or black, you won't be able to see that. Those lines will just disappear. And so that's why I do this. I've done this method many times using the calendar pages and um, this works great for me. I'll put a link down below of some videos that I have done with Dollar Tree calendars. You can get lots of projects, more than 12 projects out of one calendar. Okay, so I've cut a bunch of pieces and I'm just looking to see which ones are going to be my favorite, the ones that I want to feature on this box. And these are the ones I'm going to use. And I have some matte Mod Podge. You can use whatever kind of Mod Podge you want. I won't be putting anything on the top. I'm just going to be using it underneath. And I'm going to kind of go with and against the grain 
in this box. I'm going to turn it upside down because I can center it better if I can see all the sides instead of just slapping it on the top. And then trying to move it around and possibly tearing it. I just put it down like a puzzle piece with the intentional overhang and you'll see how we fix that. So the squeegee works perfect for this project. You can see here we have extras on the edges and we're just going to take that foam sanding block or whatever, you can use an emery board if you have it, and just kind of shear that off the edges and you have a nice clean finish. You want to do that on the top, both sides, and also on your bottom. It kind of gets, lets that gray shine through just a little bit on your seams and it's just a really pretty look. We're going to continue around and do the same thing. I don't use a ton of Mod Podge because I don't want bubbles and issues and thankfully with this calendar paper I had no problem at all with bubbles or kind of um, waves, you know how you get the little waves in the paper sometimes, no problem at all. And as you can see, you cannot see those dark lines underneath there at all. Same process on this box. On this side of the box, just go around and sand it off. And be careful, you don't want to cut into the paper that is right beside it. Just make sure you get your angle right and you won't have any problems. And this is how it looks when it is completed. Isn't that cute? Oh, and I did go down on the inside a little bit with that gray paint. So, no need to do the bottom. Now I'm going to show you a very easy way to style these. I just have some of these. Um, these were donated to me from my generous benefactor who donated all the supplies to my channel. And these were from, I believe, Michaels. And there are several different kinds that I have. You'll be seeing in my projects. And I'm just taking two of my favorite colored ones and putting them down in these boxes so you can get an idea of how this would look. These are very cute. I love these flowers. If you know the name of these flowers, let me know down in the comments below. I'm going to use this as my project backing. This I got from the thrift store. It already had something written on it and I couldn't get it off. So we're just gonna go over it with some of the Dollar Tree's chalkboard paint. Very easy. My favorite flat brushes that I use all the time and I'll show you why. Once you start putting your paint down, you can lay your brush on its side and get right in the curves, just like that. Makes it perfect. I love these brushes. So once it's done, you're gonna let that dry and start working on your design. So I've gone over here, chosen a design on my Cricut and I'll link what I used below and I'm beginning to cut it out. It's down on my mat. And then once it is cut out, I know you can't see it yet, but you will in a minute. I'm going to go ahead and trim off the paper I'm not going to use because I can use that on more projects because that's going to save me a little money. I'm just going to take my weeding tool and just pull off my excess and put it aside. I'm going to burnish this down with my little tool here and then begin to pull this off. Something I love about Arteza their paper is their, well this is a vinyl paper, is that it is so easy to remove and it is so easy to weed. Can you see that there's a slight purplish color on that white backing? It's just two different colors of white, but you'll see that it doesn't make any difference once you put it down. It's pretty, pretty amazing. So I'm just weeding it here. Now I'm going to put on my transfer tape and just burnish that down really well so it will lift up nicely for me. And then once I get it completely rubbed down there, I'm going to lift it off and then we're going to put it right in the center. And I'm just kind of using the guides of those curves there so I know exactly where to put it. I love, love, love this. It's so pretty. And you cannot tell once I pull off my transfer paper, you cannot tell the difference between that and the color in the trim of this board, which is pretty amazing but it comes away very easily from my transfer tape. Don't you love a good book or a good story? Yes, I love this stuff. You'll be seeing this paper again in another project. So the next one we're gonna do is going to be using this embroidery hoop, and then I have some of this cream-colored burlap 
and it's just a thick roll and it is from burlapfabric.com. I'm just going to trim this off and I'm going to fit it down in this embroidery hoop. This is easy to use. If you've ever used an embroidery hoop, you just use the little screw and the little hardware on the side to loosen it and tighten it. And then it stretches that fabric that's on the inside nice and flat. And there we go. Not hard to do. If you have any problems with your fabric kind of wrinkling, just flip it over and pull on it a little bit from the sides and it'll go down in place just like it needs to be. All right. Once that is done and I feel like it is secure, I'm gonna trim off all of that extra on the sides. Now I'll start off using little scissors because I thought that would be better since I have to get so close, but my scissors just were not behaving themselves. So I got out my new scissors and I'm just taking those and going around the edge. And they cut very nicely. Now I'm going slowly because I don't want to cut the wood, but yeah, they cut very nicely. So now we're gonna start on the floral part and I'm just gonna use some of these pretty pink flowers that I got from the thrift store and all of this greenery is from the thrift store. They're part of some, I think, bouquets that probably came from a high-end store because these are in very good condition and I just cut them apart and I'm just going to piece these together. And I've added some greenery and these beautiful little wine colored. They look, I don't know, they, mm, I don't think they're roses, but they're very pretty and they look nice with this bundle. I think the color combination's pretty. I'm gonna use my zip ties here because we wanna make sure that all of those little end pieces, even the little short end pieces stay together. So it's almost like we're, making the base of a swag. And like I said, the little ends are short, so we're gonna have to do it in two places instead of in the center so that it reaches all of them. Just cut off your excess, and then you can work on the bundle of your bouquet just a little bit. This will very easily fit through the weave and then wrap around the arrangement and around the base. So that's what I've done there, and I'm just gonna clip it off. I'm using this thinner ribbon now, which is the same color almost, but the weave is a little bit tighter than what we used in the embroidery hoop. And I'm just going to make a loop, and the first one is gonna be eight inches. And I'm gonna do this four times. That's gonna give us four little pieces on each end, or four loops on each end of the bow that I'm making. And I know you cannot see it here, and I apologize for that, but you get the gist. See that? And then I'm just gonna find my center and pinch it together. This is a, it's not a thick ribbon, but it's kind of stiff, so you can see that it holds its form, and I love that. It's not something I'm used to, to uh, dealing with with ribbons. They're usually so soft, they just lose their shape, but these, these work great. So then you know how you do a bow. You're gonna start fluffing. And there's gonna be four on one side of the knot, four on the other side of the knot. And then you're going to have your little tails that are left there. And you can just trim those tails if you want to, whichever way you like to do it. Keep fluffing it out. You could use a different color if you wanted to for this, or you could use a wired ribbon if you wanted to. I wanna add another bow in the center of this. It's the same kind of bow, but this time I only did it two times back and forth, and I used a five inch piece instead of an eight inch piece. I just laid it right on the top, tied it, wrapped it around, tied it in the back. So it's a nice knot so that when we're pulling it out, it stays. Look how nicely it stands up there. That's really nice for a ribbon that doesn't have any wire. So you see the little ornament up there that says Blossom? That came from Dollar Tree. I think it looks really nice with what we have going on in the bottom, and it's a nice little sign to put on the top. You know, you don't have to have a Cricut if you wanna use something with words on it or something that's really pretty just to adorn your arrangements or your signs, whatever you got going on. Think outside the box. So now I'm gonna take two pieces that are about 19 inches long and I'm going to make tails. I'm just gonna overlap them, pinch them in the middle, and push them into a V. You can see how I did that there? I'm gonna add some hot glue, and I've already got the bow glued down, and I'm going to add the hot glue and glue the tail down. 
Watch your fingers so you don't burn yourself. Be very careful. And I decided I want to put a loop in the middle. So I'm just going to take this little short piece of ribbon. It's about three inches long. Fold it over on itself with some hot glue to make a ring. And then once it's cooled off, a little hot glue in the middle. And that'll finish off that bow. Now to attach this, I could have laid this down when I laid down that wide ribbon that's inside the embroidery hoop and just push this string through the frame. But this was an afterthought, so just go ahead and wrap it around the back. And then I put a little bit right across the top just to hold the string so that this doesn't try to rock back and forth. I'm not going to secure it down on the ribbon though. I'm going to leave it like it is. And if it's hung up nicely and securely, it won't move. So I decided to add just a little more of that same greenery right underneath the bow so that you can see it a little bit better. And just to add a little more height to this project so it doesn't look so, you know, side to side squatty. This elongated it just a bit. Then you can just take those tails, you can keep cut them at a shorter length, you can leave them long, you can do two different lengths, you can dovetail them, you can cut them at a slant, whatever you like best. Last easiest project, we're going to use some satin nickel spray, some white wax. We're going to use just some wipes that I have here to clean my little bird. And then the little bird, I've had him for a very long time, used to use him in my Easter decor, but he's got some bangs, he's a little Got a little wear on him, so I decided I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I did an owl at Christmas time and absolutely loved it. Now you can just use a pick when they have a hole in them. Stick them in some foam and spray paint them. Now, once he's nice and dry, this is just one coat of paint. Once he's dry, this is how he looks. Very nice, kind of looks like pewter a little bit. Then I'm gonna take this white wax and my little chippy brush and just go all over this little bird on his wings, on his feet, especially any place that there's any texture. And if you do a project, you want to use wax, the more texture, the better, or you know, the more cracks and crevices, the better. Um, the owl actually has a lot more detail in it than my little bird turned out, but I'm very happy with him. All right, so now I'm just gonna take a cloth and just start to wipe that off. I started off with a piece, it's like a little piece of scrap linen that I had, but this is definitely not what you want for this project. This is how he looks so far and I have a mess on my hands because they're wet. So I went and got an extra towel and I'm just gonna start rubbing that off. I'm rubbing kind of with the grain of the feathers and the tail so that the white wax will stay in those low spots. You don't wanna just completely rub it all back off. Just be careful of how, you know, what direction you rub it in so that you leave some of that wax because that's the point. Now doesn't he look aged and adorable? He is just too cute. He looks like a little metal bird. Or maybe even pewter. Kinda looks like pewter, doesn't it? He's very cute. I've enjoyed his little makeover. Here's the box that we use the calendar on. If you like that watercolor look, perfect for you. Here is our Cricut project that we did. Here's our beautiful burlap wreath or hanger, whichever you want to call it. The other box that we did using the Dollar Tree rub on transfers, the spring transfers. Right, we're going to start off with this cross. Now, I got mine thrifted, but you can definitely get the wire ones at Dollar Tree. But I'm going to show you how to do it if you have this kind. So it's about a 20 by 12. Then I'm going to take some burlap, just plain burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree and we're gonna wrap around all of this stuff. So this is pretty easy to do, but you're gonna have to protect your fingers for sure because you're gonna be using some hot glue and some sketchy little areas. So I'm just gonna take the corner right here in the bottom and we're gonna start on the bottom part of the cross. So I'm taking my hot glue, touching the wire and also putting it down on the burlap. Then I'm gonna wrap halfway over the bottom and fold it under. You can see that I'm kind of folding it or cupping it under just like this. And then in order to save and preserve the amount of ribbon we're using, 
I want you to be very careful and just try to overlap where the wired parts are so that you don't have a bunch of extra ribbon being wasted by wrapping it around and around and around and overlapping it like crazy. So you can see here, I'm just pretty much trying to wrap it, tack it down with a little bit of glue and just stretch that ribbon as long as, as far as it will go. Because I realize some people are not being able to get out right now, it's winter time, maybe you're snowed in. Let's get out some of those things that maybe you had at fall and go ahead and use those use up that stash that I know all of us crafters have. So you're just going to continue around like this, overlapping just, just, you know, over the little wired area, just enough so that you cover up your frame like this. Now let's talk about some goals here. If you've been following me on Instagram, you know that my goals are 15,000 subscribers by August the 1st. Some people don't understand why this is important to me. But if you watch my channel and you're already subscribed, you probably already know why. I want to be able to show people that you can have a beautiful home without having to pay a fortune to make the pieces that you put in there. And you'll make them look exactly how you like them, uniquely to your own taste. So if you're not subscribed and you're watching this video, I would love to have you as part of my family. It's easy to do and free. So you can see how I finished off the back and I'm going to go around on the arms and leave the inside open. So the same process as before, I'm gonna choose a corner, doesn't matter which one. I'm gonna put a little glue on the frame and a little glue on the burlap. I'm gonna cup it under and then I'm gonna fold it around. Now don't be concerned about what we're gonna do with the edges because I'm gonna show you a way to make those nice and neat and you won't see any of your hardware underneath. So just go ahead and continue around, very easy. And then when you get to the back, cut it off and be, be careful and make sure that you're putting all your glued loose ends in the back. All right, so I'm going in here in the edges, just tacking it down with some glue. I'm gonna roll it under so that it's close to the frame, nice and neat. You can see what we're doing here and I'm just gonna take that hot glue and kind of sandwich those pieces together. I folded it under, got a nice clean edge and now I'm just using my protected fingertips to pinch this closed. It's gonna keep that burlap ribbon from slipping off and it's gonna make it nice and neat. Now, to be honest, you can see here, it takes a little more of your ribbon when you're doing the shorter arms in the top than it does on the bottom. And that's just because you don't have a lot of room to work there. But still, I didn't even use a whole spool to do this, so that's pretty good, right? All right, now I'm just gonna continue around like this. Again, this is easy to tuck down. You got the little edge where we folded it under. We're gonna press it down into the inside and roll the edges and push them together. You can do this, right? Protect those fingers though. Be sure you get some finger protectors. You can get them at Dollar Tree. So they're $1.25, uh, the dollar and quarter tree and they're real easy to use. You just slip them on your finger. They're stretchy, so they fit most fingers. All right, same process. We're gonna wrap this around and around and around. Now, I slow this down because I want you to see that at the top, I have a little hook area here, and you might not have this, but if you do, just work around it. That's what I'm doing. I'm rolling it under, tucking it in. It's being stubborn. Use your glue where you need it. And then continue around. Now, if you're gonna make a hanger for this, it would be great to put your hanger underneath before you wrap it with the ribbon so that it'll be concealed and it'll look nice and neat and high-end looking and finished. Y'all excuse my hair. I keep getting my head in the way. So you can see here what I've done. And I'm gonna continue around, just making sure that that is stuck down in there. If you just have a wire wreath from Dollar Tree, you don't have to worry about all this little, uh, those little stick areas or the little, I don't know, vine areas that are poking through. But um, yeah, you get, the, you get the idea though. So we're gonna press that down and make it nice and neat. I want the back to be neat looking too and finished. So I wanna make sure that all my edges are nice and trimmed down. Now, so far, this is what we have. This is the base that we have created. We've left the center open because this is where we're gonna do our arranging. 
Now go and pick out whatever flowers you like. I know a lot of times you can find beautiful deep reds and purples in the fall, so you may have some of that in your stash. I have these picks from last year that were thrifted. Also, the white branches, I've had those from last year. I've actually used them in a different wreath. But if you want to use fall, here is an example of one that I thrifted from fall. You can just take off the leaves that are fall specific and add on different leaves. You've seen me do that in other videos. That's so easy to do. Then you're going to want some type of a flyaway here. You can get that kind of stuff at Dollar Tree as well, or it may be in your stash already. I chose purple for my flowers because of, you know, it being a Christian holiday. So you do yours however you would like. Now you can just take those branches. Like, I know Dollar Tree has branches that you can get sometimes. I know they have pussy willow. I know they have dogwood I've seen in some people's hauls. Um, so you could use something like that if you would like. I love that this looks like dogwood to me. Um, so I'm going to use it. I'm just crossing them end over end like I'm making a swag that's going to go at a diagonal. My idea is like you see in, um, like outside of some churches, they'll have like a big cross and then they'll have the purple sash across. And uh, so I wanted to use the purple flowers for that. And then the sideways swag would be representative of the sash. So that's what I'm doing here. I hope y'all like this. I have never done, to my knowledge, to my memory, I have never done a cross wreath. So I hope this is something that y'all like. And if you don't, you know, and this is not your thing, then you can certainly use the technique on other wreaths. So you don't have to worry about that part of it. Just go ahead and just take the inspiration from it. Maybe you just like the way you needed some information on how to wrap a wreath with burlap, then you got it here. If you needed to know how to make a swag, you got that here too. So I'm just making little pins. I'm using the pins to stick through, twist them on the back, and secure these branches down where I need them. You can do it wherever you feel like the heavy spots are or where it needs a little something extra to hold it down and keep it from, you know, flopping around and coming away from your frame. This is actually going to be sort of a low profile wreath it's not going to be a whole lot sticking out we're not going to do a bow for it but you certainly can so you could actually probably do this on most screen doors you know if you have a storm door outside and you could actually put this on your door and it would fit without being crushed so i'm going to continue around just like this twist it and then i'm going to take my clippers and cut through each of those wires and press it back down into the frame you don't want this scratching your door all right, so just continuing around. You know I do this with my arranging. I just move things until it looks exactly like I want it to look, and it gives me the feel that I like. So now I'm going to start with these beautiful, deep purple hydrangeas. I'm going to cut the stems off because we don't need all of that in there. It's just making it too hard on us. Follow me on my social media. I'd love to see you there. All right, so I'm going to take one and put it kind of in the corner on the left. So if you look at that little section there that's open as a box, this is in the left corner, upper, and this is in the right lower corner. And I'm just going to push them together. And the reason I'm doing this is because I kind of want it to look like one big flower. And I think it, since they're the same color, it does kind of have that effect. Now I'm going to take my branch here with my little berries and just cut that down. I'm gonna cut it apart because I only have one and I want to be able to spread this out over this swag and in this way I can do it. So I'm just gonna press this up into here. Now if you can get in there around the branches you don't even have to use any hot glue in this area. Just press it up in there and you can also use the overlapping parts of your burlap to hold in your florals. So I'm just trimming off the little extra stuff there and putting it down in the same way that I would if I was making a swag. I'm doing it on the top corner and I'm doing it on the bottom corner. Or if you do it on the left, do it on the right. You know, that sort of thing. That's the way I want this wreath to look. And see, look at that. I pushed those closer together and just immediately made it look like one big flower. That's so much better. But that's why you wanna look at it from all angles and above it and beside it and to the left, to the right, um, to make sure that it looks exactly how you want it to look to look like you designed this with intention in mind 
And so I noticed here where it overlaps that there is a gap and I do not like that. So I'm gonna fix that by simply pulling out some flowers that are kind of extra, that are kind of, you know, you won't be missed in that area. And I'm gonna place them down right here on the branch and I'm not putting them straight up. I'm doing them kind of to the side and facing to the side like the rest of the flowers so that they fit in. So this is what I'm doing at this point, taking it, looking at it from all different directions to see what I need. And I feel like I need more flyaways. So I found these beautiful picks. They were in my little stash that I have with a bunch of extras that I cut off of other things. And I'm so glad that I picked it up because the colors look beautiful with this. They just are perfect. So because these are on just plastic, I'm just pulling these apart in little sets of twos and threes. But if you have wire in yours, just cut them with your little wire cutters there. I've got some little cutters right there that I got from the thrift store. And then see how I just press that one up into the, the frame here. It's into the ribbon and right into the frame. And it stays right where it needs to be. If you're in a place that gets a lot of wind and it's not protected though, you know, you might want to do a little extra um, gluing. And certainly if you're going to sell this, you would want to glue this in place. But for my purposes of teaching you and inspiring you, I am just going to get this project done and tell you how to do it the right way. How about that? Okay, so we have some down on the left side, uh, on the left top, and then we have the ones that we place down on the right, if you're looking at it on the right. So when you have a pick that doesn't have a long enough stem, just grab a piece of plastic, a stem, another piece of floral, stick whatever you have and just wrap it up add to it and that's what I'm doing right here I know I need a little more height so I'm taking my floral tape which by the way if you don't know is waxed you have to pull on it to make it stick it's not sticky like regular tape you pull and twist and that's how it sticks it releases the wax and it will stick to your project so now that's perfect that gets it right up where I like it simple little simple little hack there and this is our final project. You can definitely put a bow on here if you'd like, but I like mine simple and rustic as it is. So this is what it looks like when it is hanging. I believe in you, I really do. I know that you can do this, this is an easy project. And if you enjoyed it, I would love a thumbs up. It really, really helps my channel. So we're gonna start off with a little blue truck and this came from Dollar Tree. He didn't have a box, he was all on his lonesome. I have some succulents also from the Dollar Tree. These are really pretty pastels and some of this greenery that everybody is loving. This pick and the pick below it came from a Michaels grab box last year, I believe it was around fall. And then I have a variety of thrifted ribbons some foam from Dollar Tree. We're gonna start off by trimming that foam down so that it will fit in the bed of the truck. We're gonna have to have something to put our flowers into so they don't just flop around. So we will put in some of this foam and it'll stay right where we put it. We're going to start by just pulling apart our picks. I love this frosted looking fern, it's really pretty. And it kind of coordinates with what we had going on in that a little frosted pick from Dollar Tree. The greenery bouquet, I think is what they call it. I like to pull these things apart. Uh, it makes it easier for me to kind of visualize where I want everything to go. So I just start by taking things apart, especially in smaller pieces. Sometimes you have to trim it up, cut the wires down, cut off some of the, the limbs and pieces, but you'll see how we do it. Now I'm just gonna look here and decide which one of these pieces I wanna use. And you can see this is way too big. I still like it though, so I'm gonna use this piece. I'm gonna trim it down and put it right almost in the center in the back of the truck. That's gonna be our tallest point. And then we're gonna work around it. I don't wanna use pieces that are too large because they're gonna overwhelm the little truck and you won't be able to see it. So we just wanna kind of accentuate. Now my foam didn't fit in there as tightly as I thought it would, so it's moving a little bit. Just Use a little hot glue and it will hold it in place. If you put your glue in first, then you can just put it on the bottom and plop your foam down right on top. 
All right, so I went to the back corner and I'm going to the other back corner. Just trying to eyeball those and see if they're about the same. Then I'm gonna go here in the front, right kind of toward the side, and start adding in greenery pieces here and there. I don't want this to look exactly symmetrical, but I am doing, you know, one up, one down, you know, trying to get a little balance without everything being matchy-matchy on the sides. This is more of a, a cottagey feel, so it has a little more of a wild flair. It's not really an organized style, kind of like you maybe would see these if they were growing wild in nature. Now, if you cut down a pick, but you don't have the right size of stem underneath it or length of stem, you can cut off a piece from another, another um, floral or another pick and just use a little bit of wire and just attach it together and, and make a pick. Simple, right? I do that a few times in this project. So I'm gonna add in my pinks now, my pretty little pink flowers. And you see, this is just way too big, way too big for what's going on with this truck. So I just cut it down and I'm gonna add a little piece of that wire, leftover wire pick, just like that. Now I have a nice little piece that's firm enough to push into the foam without making everything collapse. Cause you know, if you try to put floppy plastic into that foam, it's, it's just not gonna work for you. So this fern to me was just way too big. It was out of balance. So I'm just going to trim it down. And with these plastic pieces, that's the beauty of it. You can just manipulate it and make it look exactly like you like it. So that's what I've done here and made my own little pick the size that I needed it. I'm gonna put that in there. And of course, always look at it from top, bottom, all sides to make sure that you have everything where it should be, that you don't have any holes or gaps in there. You want it to be nice and, and full. All right, so now we're gonna start with the little embellishments. So I've chosen these because I thought they would make cute little signs to kind of have a stake and be in the back of the truck. Almost like we're advertising that we're selling flowers from this truck. So I'm cutting these down. These calendars have so many good uses. You can use the little ones off the back. You can use the pages on the inside to make pieces. Ugh, I've done so many videos with calendar pages. They just have the prettiest artwork. So I wanna make this a little bit stronger and it's just on regular, you know, thin paper. So I'm just making it a little bit stronger and I'm gonna add a little pick to the back and you can use whatever kind of pick you have. You can use one of your greenery picks if you'd like. This is what I had, so I'm gonna go ahead and use this. I'm gonna add some glue and then I'm just gonna cover the back because initially I thought I just wanted to have a sign on one side. So this is what I would do for it. Now to embellishment, I'm taking to embellish it, I am going to take this yellow and beige ribbon, make a little bow, and put on there. You can do top, bottom. You don't even have to do this if you don't want to. You can leave it off completely if you would like, but I, I like the cottagey feel of it. And I'm gonna put it right in the center underneath the truck. So it's gonna be glued to the sign rather than glued to the pick. And then I decided, let's take the other truck, or another one of the trucks, and put it on the back side. So now I have a double-sided sign. That was so simple, wasn't it? So there I've showed you two options. You can do it either way. Because this one was trimmed out, I decided I wanted to, to trim this one to match the other side. I'm gonna use that same yellow ribbon. And just this time, make a little trim only on the bottom and trim it off. And there's our little double sign that we can put down in the truck for a little extra something. And I think it's really cute. Use whatever flowers, whatever colors you like, but I really like this combination with this little blue truck. So now you see me doing what I do in all of my floral arrangements. I'm looking side to side to see what else I need. And I decided that we could put a little farm fresh sign on the truck. So I'm just taking a piece off of another one of these little calendar um, pictures. And I'm just gonna use the farm fresh off of the Christmas sign. Trimming it down. And we're gonna put this on our truck. You do have options. You could put it across the back of the truck here on the tailgate if you would like. You could put it on the front of the truck 
or you could put it on one of the doors and that's what I decided to do here kind of on the door and going toward the back of the truck and this is what it looks like and can you see what I see it needed another flower that's why we look at all angles now isn't that better much better this would be really cute on a tiered tray if you like doing tiered trays, it would be nice on a desk because it's small and compact. It would be a nice little pick-me-up for a friend or a loved one. It's just a precious little truck. You like it? Alright, now we're going to move on to the next one and we're going to make a beautiful wreath in a basket. So here is some ribbon that I got on clearance. This one came from the thrift store. And I'm liking the grays and whites right now. I have some thrifted lavender and this cute little canvas that came from Dollar Tree. So be sure you pick one of these up. Very cute. And I like that it's got that gray in there. It's going to look really cute with this, I think. So I'm just giving you an idea of the size so you know what to look for. I'm going to use some of the pipe cleaners and some zip ties. And I have a flat basket that I've used in another arrangement some greenery that I have, just leftover bits and pieces and a piece of floral foam. What we need to do is make sure that our floral foam, foam is secured down to this basket. And because I want to be able to use this basket again for other projects, as I've already used it in several projects, I don't want to use hot glue here. And the weave of the basket is big enough that we can put a pipe cleaner through it. So I'm going to use the pipe cleaner and put it through the holes that I've made in the foam, feed it through the back of the foam, through the bottom of the basket, back up, and then secure it down on each side. This is going to keep this thing in place nicely. I picked it up after I had it all attached and shook it really well, and it stayed right where it needed to stay. So that was perfect. If you don't want to use your basket for, you know, another wreath maybe later on or another project then you can go ahead and just glue your foam down if that's what you want to do you could also use pipe cleaners here if you don't have zip ties my zip ties come from dollar tree and so do the pipe cleaners so hopefully you can find one or the other in your store the prices now are dollar 25 in my area um, where they were my stores were a little bit slower changing their prices uh, i think than other places according to the videos that i had seen but yeah, it's finally happened. Not sure how I feel about it yet. All right, I'm gonna use my staple gun with really short staples just to attach these onto the backs of the sign and I'm stapling it into the canvas there and into the little, there's like a board underneath there that the staples go into. And that way I don't poke a hole through anything. And I'm just gonna give it a few twists so that it doesn't fall out because it's not really tight. And then I'm going to feed those pipe cleaners through the basket. I'm just trying to, I know that I want this sign far down, pretty far down, because the bulk of my arrangement is going to be above the sign. We will have some going on below the sign, but mainly above the sign. So once I get those where I like them, I'm going to twist them around so they don't fall off, and then just trim those off. And poke your little extra wires down into the basket. That way you don't scratch your wall or your door or wherever you intend to hang this. All right. And by all means, if you can't find the farmer's market sign, any sign that you find, you can, you can do the same thing. And if you don't have lavender, you can use any picks that you like. So I love these. I got these at the thrift store. And I know that I wanted to use those in an arrangement by themselves. I just, I don't mix lavender with other things. I like to use them by themselves in a project, you know, let them be center stage. So I'm trimming off what I don't need. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the little grass here that I have. And the grass is kind of a frosted looking grass as well. They were in bigger picks and I just cut them apart. I want this to look kind of fanned out. So I'm taking these pieces and fanning those out or sticking those in that almost like sun rays into that floral foam. So you remember when we were kids and we, and we drew the sun and we had the rays poking out around the sides? Well, that's kind of the idea here. Now you can see here how this is, and this came from the thrift store. 
You can do this with lots of bundles and bouquets that you get. Just pull them down and apart. You can see where they attach and cut them off. If you cut them off too far, far up, then you'll get individual little pieces of grass rather than bundles of grass. And I, I want it to be thick and bundled. Otherwise, I don't believe you could just stick that plastic in there anyway. So you have to do it this way. So the same process we used up top, I'm gonna use here on the bottom. And the length of the grass is the same on both of them. I like this hanging down. I don't wanna cut it off, but you can certainly trim yours if you would like. Now I'm just gonna take these picks and kind of arrange them. And then on the outer part, going down and back, I'm gonna press in this. I don't want my project to be completely flat like it's laying there. I want it to have a little bit of forward movement. So I pull those picks out a little bit so there's some space between what's going on in the back and what's going on in the front. And there were some pieces that had been picked off. I guess whoever had it before me had used those pieces. So I just pushed those to the back. I could have cut them off, but they don't bother me. So I just moved them out of the way. Now I'm gonna take some of this really pretty lamb's ear and add it sort of toward the center in the front. I like the color of this, this bluish green color with the purple of the lavender. I think it looks very complimentary. I'm going and taking little pieces of the picks and covering up to make sure that we don't have any of that floral foam showing because it is difficult to achieve a high-end look when you leave all of your hardware and such out. You want it to be covered up with your greenery or whatever that you have. Flowers, greenery, bows, whatever you have. You don't want anything showing. And then just add here and there. I've added a larger pick on the bottom, but only one and one to the side because we're gonna add a bow and I need space. So the right lower part is where we're gonna put the bow. I'm just gonna continue to add bits and pieces of a pick that I've pulled off here and there where I feel like I need it to add a little extra. I don't wanna to put too much on because I don't wanna cover up my farmer's market wording. So now I've got some eucalyptus. I'm gonna add that in. It's almost like a step down, you know, from the lavender and then eucalyptus and then the lamb's ear. It's kinda of like a step down process. So now let's work on our bow. This is a very easy bow. I'm gonna show you how to make it here and we're gonna measure it out. All right, so there's 12 inches. Now I'm gonna hold where the 12 inches is so I can mark again where I go to the six and that makes 18 inches. So we have an 18 inch tail and I'm just gonna hold it like this and then start making my loops. Now make your loop. This ribbon looks the same on both sides so I'm just gonna pull it over and I'm going to measure a six inch loop which is actually 12 inches of ribbon, but it's a six inch loop. So if you're measuring yours on your cutting mat or on your ruler, we're going to be making six inch loops. Now I'm just measuring with my fingers here, you no know, pulling those bow ends together instead of having to refer constantly to my ruler to see that they're the same size and that does work. There's your proof. So now we have one loop on each side. Here's our second loop and then I'm again measuring, and then one more loop on the other side, and we will have four loops, and that's all we're gonna need for this bow. Just like that, same measurements, and then I'm gonna make my tails the same length. Cut that off, love my Arteza scissors, they are so sharp. Okay, now that's what we have for the bottom part of our bow. I'm gonna put it in a clip, and set it aside while we work on the next part. Now, you can see here what I'm doing. Same thing, we want to have a long tail. It's gonna be 18 inches just like the other one. And now I'm gonna make the loops. Instead of six inches, we're gonna do five inches on this one and we're only gonna make two loops. So one on one side, one on the other side, and then our other tail. This is not a wired ribbon. So you can't expect too much from a ribbon that doesn't have wire, as far as bow making. So I didn't wanna use a big bulk in this particular type of a fabric ribbon because it's not really going to go where I want it to go. It's not really gonna stay 
where I want it to stay. So I'm just going to add it to the middle of my firmer ribbon, which is on back, and it has its wire. I'll be able to adjust the back a little bit more than the front. And you can see here I'm getting an idea of how I want it to be. I'm going to take a zip tie. Keep, I'm going to keep holding it in my other hand and just put that zip tie through the center and then pull it down. Once you get it in there nice and tightly, you can cut it off and then kind of put your bow where you want it to go, kind of fluff it. I fluffed the bow about a thousand times. I do it as I'm making it, after I make it, when I put it down, after it is fixed where it needs to be, and then before I film the end result of my project, I fluff it again. So it's a constant process for me, constantly moving around. If you look at your bows and go, oh, geez, that is terrible. That is an awful bow, I can't stand it. No, just keep fluffing, keep working on it. Believe, believe that it is going to be better because it always is. For me, always fluffing the heck out of it really makes a difference. Make it the way you want to make it. So now I'm just taking another piece of that ribbon, folding it over, making a nice little square, gluing it, and then putting it down in the center because I don't want to see that zip tie underneath there. And you just never know from different angles if you're going to see it or not. So there's the bow all fluffed out. And I'm gonna go in now and add in what I feel like needs to be added in any of my little blank spots. I see some areas that need to be widened a bit and I think that putting a little extra right here would help lengthen that, make it a little bit wider from side to side. I'm just gluing it to the back of the sign. We don't want any bald spots, if you will. I want a little more height here, so I'm adding that. And then I'm gonna dovetail my ends. This is a very deep dovetail, meaning I'm cutting it a long, a long snip of it. You can see how long I'm cutting that rather than just a tiny one, and it makes a very deep V cut. You can do it any way you want. In this one, I'm not gonna dovetail, I'm cutting it slants. So you can do a variety, you can mix it up. Just be sure you do something to it. Make it look intentional. And this is how it turns out. And I really like it. You can see some of that lavender is kind of moving forward. Some of it's flopping downward. It's just a really pretty farmhouse piece, I think. Real cottagey. Next project, we're going to be using another Dollar Tree calendar picture. And this is actually the front of this calendar. And I believe this is a 2022. Yes. I'm also going to use some of these little wooden shingles. I'm going to use some of these thrifted picks and thrifted flowers. And this is a thrifted cutting board. One side is stained and the other side is kind of blank. I'm gonna start by, I know I wanna use this front page of this calendar, which is thicker, and I like that, I'm glad. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off. Generally, when you see thankful, grateful, and blessed, that's something that is used during the fall. But I think that every day we should be thankful and grateful and feel blessed because we are every single day. And I love the colors in this beautiful print. I love it. You know, I'm using peaches and creams and things like that in my home. Uh, and I do have a, like a farmhouse cottagey cabin. So a lot of stuff going on. And I think that this just fits really well into, you know, what I like in my particular style. So I'm gonna take my little glue stick and put it down. And then I'm gonna take this little squeegee from Mod Podge. Um, from the uh, plaid company is where I got it from, but it's Mod Podge Squeegee. And just press it down, make sure there's no bubbles. There's a little overlap here, and that is totally fine because I'm going to use my little handy sander here, and this comes from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just gonna brush this away at a little angle on the side, and this is gonna give it a nice, crisp, clean finish. And it'll make it look like it is designed to be here all along. You won't be able to see an edge. You won't be able to see where it meets. It'll just be perfectly clean and straight. Do the same thing to the other side, and now we're going to trim it out. Thankfully, the print has a stripe on it, so you can actually see where you would want to follow a line, and you can use that as a line to put down your pieces if you would like. But in a minute, I will show you an alternative so that if you don't trust your eyes or your fingers, um, you can actually put these down and make sure that they are exactly straight where you want them to be. You can use wood glue or regular glue, whatever you have. 
For video purposes, it's easier for me to grab the glue gun because it works quicker. So now my piece down here is longer than it needs to be, so I'm just going to trim it off. I got these pieces in a big bag from the thrift store. You can use Jenga blocks for this if you would like, or you can use popsicle sticks to trim yours out, or you don't have to trim it out at all. Looks pretty just the same. So you can use a ruler and some clamps to make a straight line if you need to have a little more reassurance, if you don't trust yourself to make a straight line, then you can just put your glue on and line these up. So once we have the top and the bottom done, this is how it looks so far. Beautiful as it is, right? You could leave it alone if you wanted, but I wanna try to make a little swag piece to go on top that matches the florals that are on the print. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just kind of, I wanted to show you my thought process. I'm looking at the colors of the leaves. I'm looking at everything that's going on. What can we pick apart? What can we put together? And kind of getting a layout to how I think I want things to fit, how big I want them to be, and where I want them to go. And I'm just kind of manipulating the petals. Uh, some of the petals on the flower were flipped over and you can just flip those back, make them look nice and pretty. Then I'm going to use some floral wire to attach most of these pieces together. I'm gonna grab it up in the middle, wrap that around there. You see pieces fall out, not a problem. Pick it up, put it back in, and then twist it around. If you're not comfortable using the wire, cause you gotta be careful now, it will poke your fingers. I have bloodied my fingertips before, a little sticking with that. You could always use a pipe cleaner here, or you could always use a zip tie. Whatever you're comfortable with, go ahead and use that. Now I made a little sneaky way to hold this on without using particularly glue on the front of the board. That way I could reuse it if I want to. See, here's the stained up backside. I'm taking this little piece of a, it's like a plastic, a very firm plastic tip, and the wire that is used in there that is wrapped around, I'm gonna pull it out just a little bit through that hole Put this piece of pick down here and it's gonna hold it tightly and then hot glue one of those little tabs right over it. Now it won't move. It is there now. And one more flower right in the middle. Now I'm gonna start building outward a little bit. I've taken another pick apart, that first pick that I showed and I'm just going to add these beautiful leaves in here because I like the shape and the variety that gives. Just like in the picture, there are different kinds of vegetation in there and that's what I want to reflect in my little swag on the top. So there's some eucalyptus here and there. You know again this is cottagey. I want it to have that cottage feel. I want it to be nice and earthy and rustic and cottagey. So that's what this one looks like. Here is the wreath. You can see how it looks while it is hanging up and you can see how the lavender is spilling forward and I really like that. There's our cute little simple bow we made. Here is the truck. He's so sweet. I love doing little floral arrangements in these little bitty trucks and pieces from Dollar Tree. Here is our calendar sign. I've made lots of calendars. All right, we're gonna start off with a four by six little house shaped frame. Two of these from Dollar Tree. And we're gonna use four of these little picket fence pieces. And here's the little coat on the back. And we're not gonna need the strings, so I can take those off. We're going to use some paint stir sticks. Mine are 12 inches long. I have some of these that I've had for a long time um, that I got from Dirt Cheap. I'm gonna use those now. And then I'm gonna use some smaller popsicle sticks. I'm going to use some antiquing wax and wipes. But you can use any type of watered down paint that you like, a paintbrush. And I'm just gonna start off by removing these. If you're going to do this, go ahead and if you wanna take the time, remove your staples also, but I didn't bother with it. Then we're gonna open up our frames, take the backing, the glass, the paper, and these little tabs that hold it down. I'm gonna take all those out. Sometimes they'll just pull out with your fingers. Uh, sometimes you gotta use some pliers. So, you know I like my rustic look. We're going to achieve that look with a little antiquing wax and a wipe. Now, like I said a minute ago, just go ahead and use whatever brown paint you have. Even Dollar Tree has a variety of paints. Just add a little water to it. And then the goal is to be able to see the stain, the um, 
texture of the wood underneath the stain. So you don't want to use like a, a brown paint and I'm going to show you that shortly. You'll see the difference. Um, using some type of a antiquing wax or a watered down wash will give you a, you know, a rustic look where you can still see the wood grain. So I'm going around all of my edges and trying to get in between the slats also. Y'all, I've got a new goal. My new goal is to reach 15,000 subscribers by August the 1st of this year. I'm really excited about that. I feel like it's possible. I have lots of people who view my videos and give such wonderful feedback and I would really love to change some of you viewers into subscribers. Being a subscriber gives you notifications of all my updates, all my new videos and tabs and the community posts so we get to talk there too. Plus, I do giveaways pretty often, and you don't want to be missing out on that. Okay, so if you see here in between, there are some little like splintering or little rough spots. You can just go ahead and fold down a piece of sandpaper, and mine did come from Dollar Tree. Fold it down and just run it right through those cracks and smooth it down. Now, you could do this beforehand. It'd probably be best, but I did not do that. You can see the little... I don't know if you would call that like a backer or whatever that holds those pieces together. We're just going to go across those little beams in the back with some brown paint. I didn't water this part down because I like it looking like it is recessed. And if you use a darker color, it will kind of push that to the back. Visually, anyway. Okay, so this is what it looks like if you just use a regular brown paint. And I think this is Teddy Bear by Folk Art, this brown color and you can certainly do it this way if you would like. I'm just doing this because I know that the arrangement I'm gonna do, you will not be able to see the pickets on the inside of the flower box, but on the offhand chance that at a later season when I change this out to something different, you might be able to see down in the box. So I think it would be best if I just go ahead and cover up everything that's on the inside so that you don't see it. Now see the top is where it's painted and on the bottom is where you can see I watered it down with a little bit of, of water in that teddy bear paint. So I did that intentionally so you can see the difference. Now we gotta attach these together and I'm trying to get my spacing right. So you can see here that they are not exactly squared, meaning they do not sit flat and those pickets are not spaced apart uh, exactly. So, in order to try to make up for that, I want my box to sit flat. So I'm standing them up, you know, kind of supporting them with the ruler to make sure I have a flat surface on the bottom. And just using some popsicle sticks that are colored, that I painted, and to go across there. Now to make sure both sides are the same, I'm just gonna stack them on top of one another. And we're gonna follow that same process. Add your glue on the bottom and the glue on the top, and we'll have nice flat edge picket fence pieces. If you can't find these picket fence pieces, you could also just make your own. It'll take a little more time, but you can definitely make your own from popsicle sticks. Or you could use the little pallets that you get from Dollar Tree. It'll give it a little different look, but it'll be okay. Now here are our house frames. You can go ahead and paint those whatever color that will match. And I'm just using these little pieces here. Now these are actually garden stakes where you can, you know, put carrots and peas and whatever you have in your garden. But I've had them for a long time and I thought I would go ahead and use them here in case you don't have stir sticks. Grab something that maybe you've thrifted or that you already have in your stash that you haven't used yet. So we're gonna just go with what we have. I'm going along the inside edge of that frame to decide how long I need my pieces to be so that they will fit snugly down into that depression in the frame. I'm going to do it on both sides. And then you can use whatever process you want to use to cut these down. I do have a little a miter box and a saw, and so that's how I chose to cut mine down. I'm going to start with my center piece. I do recommend that you want to use something like maybe a Gorilla Glue or if you have a regular glue stick. If you want this to last a long time, you might want to use something like uh, E6000 to do this. Totally up to you. But I know this probably would not hold up to the weather, you know, outside on your porch if you're using regular glue. 
So I'm just gonna space these out a little bit so that they kind of mimic what we have going on with the little picket fence sides. And then we're gonna put little cross beams that are also painted because we want this to look like the fence. And see the fence has it in the back. Now we want that to be the same thing on the both ends of our box. So these are the ends, the tall ends, the tall frame pieces rather. I'm gonna trim down these just with my little bull nose pliers. They're also little wire cutters. I'm gonna cut those down and then they will fit nicely on the back there. You can still use stir sticks or large popsicle sticks. Whatever you have, go ahead and use that. You may have more than three pieces. If your pieces are thinner, you may have five, you may have four. Whatever you have, just make it work. And then I'm just gonna use my hot glue and go across there to make sure that it is secure where I want it to be. And so this is how it's gonna look. All stained and painted. And then do the same thing on the second piece, but in order to get them even, I'm just gonna go side by side, mark them so that I get my planks or my little cross beams in the same spots and everything achieves a nice high-end look. We want this to be pretty and high-end looking. But of course we wanna save money, so this is how we do it. Now we have matching ends for our box and we have our sides done. How are we gonna connect these together? We're gonna use our tower blocks that we got from Dollar Tree. I got a box a long time ago and I am still using the same box. These make great supports. So we're gonna start off by putting our glue down on the side and lining up that side piece. I'm gonna add some hot glue to the bottom and to the side and place down one of my blocks. It's not necessary for you to paint or stain these, but it is your personal choice. If you would like to, you certainly can. Of course, you wanna hold that for a minute to let the, sit, the glue sit up, and then you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. You're gonna add your glue there. Make sure that it's kind of square and even. You can feel that with your fingers. Apply your support, and then we're gonna start working on the other side. I flipped it over and I'm putting my supports the exact same way that we did on the other side. Very easy. This is also gonna be a support for us when we put down our bottom beams so that we have something to hold our foam. Okay, so now we need to see how long we need our bottom braces to be and we're gonna just cut down those popsicle sticks. I'm just measuring against the side here. We're gonna cut those down. I'm just using my little, uh, it's like a box cutter tool that you can get from Dollar Tree and it comes in a three pack. They work very well for this type of thing. Score it on both sides and edges, then you can just twist it and it'll snap off. So there's an option if you don't have a miter box and saw. All right, we're gonna place the first one down there and then we're going to do the next one. Same way, doesn't have to be beautiful and it does not have to be painted. If you're enjoying this video, I would love if you would give me a thumbs up. Now, so to connect those two together, we're going to use some shorter popsicle sticks which happen to fit wonderfully in the bottom. I'm gonna start off with just three across the bottom and then I'm going to add a little bit more in there to make sure that it's gonna keep my foam from falling out all over the place. And I initially thought that I would use the type of foam that's like a styrofoam, but when I was looking through my stash, I noticed I had a lot more of the, the really fine textured floral foam that you use for live flowers, and I decided to go ahead and just use some of that. If you were to use the, that type of foam for live flowers, you just soak it in water first and then you put it in something that will not leak and then, you know, go from there. Leave me a comment below if you are enjoying this video. 
If you've never done another one of my projects but you've been watching, you really should consider doing this one. This one is so inexpensive and it's going to take you all the way through the year in all of your decor. So Dollar Tree offers two different types of this foam that I was referring to. One of them has four pieces and the other one is one long rectangular piece. It's going to take one piece of the smaller ones and one of the big ones to fill up the bottom of this. I'm just going to glue it down to make sure that my foam does not come out or wiggle around when I'm trying to make my arrangement because I'm going to be putting a lot of flowers in here and really packing them in. Okay, so now I'm going to take my thrifted flowers and greenery and you can certainly get things at the Dollar Tree that are really gorgeous. Mine all came from Goodwill. That's where I thrift my florals. And here's an example of the things I'm going to be using. Some mini roses, a couple of types of hydrangeas. And these are mm, kind of peachy and pinky color, which I am loving this spring. I'm going to add in my greenery. One of these big sprigs, because I only have four. One to each corner, just to kind of hang over and stick out in the sides. You can use ferns for this from Dollar Tree. You could use any type of greenery you like, really. And see, my box came undone. I had to fix it back. That's why you need Gorilla Glue. All right, I'm going to start in the middle with my tallest flower. And this is going to be hydrangeas. They kind of, uh, they look better as they are in nature. And they kind of form a ball, like a little floral ball. So I'm going to try to keep that look when I put all of these pieces in here. I'm going to keep them kind of domed where the highest part's going to be in the middle. And they'll be a little bit lower on the sides. And then I'm going to add some greenery and those little roses here and there to just give it a little more texture and a little more interest. Don't be afraid to cut down your flowers, your wired stems to cut leaves off where you need to. That's that's what it's there for. Get your wire cutters, go to town on it. You can always, if you cut something too short, add a pick to it, glue it, add some floral tape, and fix it right up. So see, I had that one in the corner too low. All right, so you can see right now how it's looking so far. And we're gonna continue to look at it from all angles and see what we want to add next. I'm going to go in the sides. And I kind of want to do the same thing in the front and back. This is going to be more of a symmetrical type. You can see how it's domed here. This is a symmetrical type arrangement. We don't have that wild look that I usually go for. We want things to be completely in harmony, with an exception I do put some things hanging down in the front just a little bit. So here are these cute little roses. I'm going to leave them in bundles of two and three and just add them here and there. They are almost exactly the same color. Now if you don't like this monotone look, you can certainly use white or yellow. You can use any color that you like. And that same goes for the hydrangeas. You don't have to use pink. Use whatever you can find and whatever it is that you prefer. For your decor of course. I can just see this box for every season already. I have ideas of how I'm going to use it and I'm so very happy to say that I will be using this box throughout my decorating this year and doing several different arrangements. So be sure that you make one of these boxes so that you can follow along and we can do it together. I'm loving this so far. I wanted to add a little bit of this bluish green because I think that it looks really great with the peach and it gives a little more variety in the greens that we already have in there. See now it's where it's taking it to a more rustic or cottagey look because I'm adding all those other little sweet details into it. I've really kind of gotten away from just, you know, rustic farmhouse. I'm doing a lot more cottage in my house. How are y'all doing your decor this year? Are you changing anything up? Or are you going to stick with the same thing? I'm really enjoying the romantic cottagey feel. I'm redoing my bedroom and 
I'm just really liking adding the flowers and, and some other things to the room. It's just really making it feel so cozy and feminine. And this is what we got so far. What do you think? This is the time to add your final touches. Put in some extra where you need it. Move some things around. Here is our flower box. Isn't this adorable? I absolutely love this. Y'all mean so much to me. If you're a viewer and you would like to become part of this YouTube family, it's so easy to subscribe and it is totally free. And I give you all the goodies because I believe in you and I believe in our creativity. Some thrifted and Dollar Tree ribbon. And that's what I have here. Use whatever you like. I'm gonna use this Dollar Tree sign with the bunny. It says hop. And I'm gonna use this wreath that I've had for a long time. I thrifted it and here are the measurements for you if you wanna do something approximate. I wanted an oval so that it would maintain like a sort of an egg shape. I'm gonna take off the flower that is on the bunny and we're gonna to have to find a way to attach the sign to the wreath. So I'm gonna use a pipe cleaner or Chanel stem, whatever you wanna call it, some hot glue and a little piece of paper. Press that down and let it cool and go to the other side and do the same thing. You need to kind of put it on there and, and look at it and see if it's where you want this to connect. And then set it aside to cool. We're going to start looking at some flowers and these are thrifted flowers. I'm, uh, I'm not sure where they came from. I can't see the tag. But you can get them pretty much anywhere this color this time of year. I'm going to feed these wires through here and then twist them on the back. Very easy. And do the same thing on the other side. Make sure that you position that little bunny right where you want him in the wreath. And I'm trying to make sure that he's down far enough that I can see the top of his little head. So we're going to make sure that it's tight. When you flip it over, you can tighten it up and then poke those little pieces of wire straight down into that ribbon and to the wreath. All right, I want to save these leaves, so I'm just going to push them up toward the flower head and go ahead and cut these off. I'm leaving about five inches and then we're going to pick our greenery and cut those off. I want this to be something that is not so bushy, so I'm going to trim it down. And I only had three of these pieces of fern, so I'm gonna try to place them strategically so that they can be seen. It's really easy with this type of a grapevine wreath because you can just poke it down in there and it will pretty much stay where you put it. But I'm gonna give you some options in case yours is not being agreeable. You can use a little hot glue and press it down like that until it's dry. Or you can make some little pins, which is what I do and you're essentially making, taking the floral wire and making like, like a little bobby pin. If you're familiar with a bobby pin, you're just gonna fold it just like that. And then you're gonna make sure that it's over the stem part of your flower or your greenery. Push it through your wreath and then on the back, just twist it around and poke it back into the frame. I'm going to do the same thing here. Now, I'm working in a somewhat of a moon shape on the side, and I'm going to do things in opposite directions. So I'll have part of the arrangement going upward, and then I'm going to do it backwards on the bottom, and have it going sort of, well, backwards, or in opposite direction. So pretty much their stems are facing one another, if that makes more sense. Okay, so I'm gonna take the flower and bend it so that it has a little neck. It's bending its head forward. And then I'm gonna push the leaves up and then feed it down into the wreath. That's so simple and you don't even have to have any glue to make these flowers stay, which is great because these are very pretty flowers and I may wanna use them again in another project. Same thing here, I'm gonna push up my leaves, bend it, make a little neck for it, and then press it down. The reason I bend it is so that it will be 
facing straight upward instead of being at an angle. So I want it facing outward so that when it's hanging on the wall or the door, you can see it right into the center of the flower. And that's important with these flowers because it's got that very pretty greenish yellow in the center. And I want you to be able to see that, not just the pink side of the flower. So continuing along, press, pushing up the leaves and arranging those flower heads, just kind of bending it out. And you can see that the, we're forming a moon shape on the side. So my third piece is gonna go right here on the side. I'm just gonna bend it a little. And then continue adding greenery here and there where it makes sense and elongating that line of flowers by just continuing around the side a little bit. So what was our moon shape or our, our quarter moon shape over there is now a little bit elongated going toward the side. And I'm going to go up toward the top and this flower is smaller than the rest of them so I think that it is appropriate to be at the beginning. A lot of these flowers, if you have a good quality flower, you'll be able to kind of play around with those petals and make them stay where you want them instead of just using squished flowers. And I know sometimes when we get them, they're mashed, but just fluff them out. Fluff them out and give them a chance. Um, they have a lot of potential. So rather than the flowers that he had on his neck, I decided that a little, little pretty bow would be appropriate. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this ribbon. I did thrift it, but it is originally from Dollar Tree. I don't know if it's out this year, but they do have a really pretty plaid that you can use. I just want something that's gonna coordinate with the other ribbons that I've chosen and also with the flowers. So with these bows, you know, just keep playing with them. Don't give up on yourself and, and think that you've created a disaster. It's easy enough to fix, and then you can force it into place with a little bit of hot glue if it is not agreeing with you. So just a dot, it doesn't take a lot, and I'm just using my thumb on the inside so that it doesn't make the bow flat. I'm only gluing down the bottom or the back portion. And then we're gonna glue down the tails. And they'll stay right where they need to be. Now we're gonna start on a pretty bow. I'm gonna take 18 inches and fold it over. And then I'm gonna fold this several times. And in the end, I'm gonna have three loops on one side, two loops on the other side. This is an easy bow and don't worry about it. If you lose track when you're counting, that is totally fine. Whatever you come up with is gonna be a pretty bow. I assure you, just Fold it over several times, don't worry about it. Now I'm folding it in half so that I can get my centers and I'm gonna notch this bow, just cutting through the wire and right into the fabric. This bow has been done lots of times by me. It's an easy bow to do. I did not create this bow. Some people say that it is the Olivia bow, but I've seen it done by people other than Olivia as well. So I don't know who originated it. Can't really give credit to that person. But I can give thanks because this is a very, very easy bow to use. Same process here, but I'm going to have two loops on each side. And then I'm going to cut this off. This ribbon that I thrifted does not have any wire in it. But it is a very, mm, I will say it's a thick, good quality fabric that this ribbon is made out of. So carefully putting a notch in the side here, turning the bow around and notching it here. Then I'm gonna line the notches up, make sure that your loose ends are downward, and then you can use a pipe cleaner. You can use whatever you like, but a pipe cleaner works best for me on this type of bow. Slip it into the notches of the bigger bow, and then you're gonna flip it over. Get your zip tie arranged here. I'm just gonna kind of pleat the back of the bow just in the fold before I pull it tight. And then start pulling out the tails and the bow. I like to start on the bottom of my bows when I began to fluff them out. It's just a little bit easier for me. Um, but you can do this whichever way you would like. 
and then I'm going to pull the top apart. So you see I have five loops on the bottom and four on the top and the little tails that are sticking out there. Now feel free to cut the tails down very low if you want to do that. You can dovetail the tails. You can cut them at a slant, just whichever way you like best. I wanted to do the dovetails on here. They're not really noticeable in the end with this bow, but in the event that they would show up, I like the idea of them being dovetailed. Just seems more festive. And this is sort of a Eastery and definitely a spring wreath. And so easy. And I've spent very little money. I bought the sign. I had everything else already. So that's pretty good, right? $1.25 for the sign? Yeah. So even though this doesn't have wire, the quality of the fabric is allowing me to move that around and keep it in a nice shape. And then we're going to do the tails. Very easy. We're going to do 18 inches for the tail. Just cut off one of each of those ribbons and I'm going to slant these. I'm going to mix it up, give it a little variety. Just cut it on a slant. Very easy. So you have some options. You know, you can, you can do it a bunch of different ways. You don't have to copy me exactly. You can do whatever you are inspired to do. That's why I do these videos. It's to inspire you. It's to make you think, hmm, I could do that. But I like, maybe I like purple. Or maybe I like blue or yellow better for Easter. Whatever you like, you can do it that way. Or maybe you were at Goodwill and you found a really beautiful gray and white checked ribbon. Go ahead and use that. Whatever you have, you can use it. It's going to be unique and it's going to bring you joy because it's going to be exactly what you love. And that's what we need in our home. So we're going to use the wire here that we twisted this with. Go right through that wreath and twist it around. And then we have our tails. And I wanted the tail to be kind of attached sort of toward the bottom, toward the inside. So that we have plenty of length represented and the bow doesn't cover the entire thing up. I'm going to feed a little through the back behind there and then a little on the side because I like the way that looks. But you can do it any way you like. I just want to be sure that my bunny can be seen. So the ribbon that is around the bunny's neck, I'm going to use to tie around the center of our bow. It matches so well. It's very, very coordinated. And then we're just going to go ahead and use that ribbon to tie around, just thread it between the tails there and around the back of the wreath. So tie it tightly in a double knot and trim off what we don't need. If it was in the center you could make a hanger with that but we have ours off to the side as I often do in my wreaths. You see how you can curl the ribbon just with your fingers? So if you wanted it to be in the front you could do that. Alright I had some greenery left so I'm just going to cut it apart and go in here and add little pieces here and there until I get the fullness that I like. You know, I always recommend that you turn your pieces side to side and look at it from all angles to ensure that you get it looking exactly how you like it. And it's looking good so far. I like this. I like all the variety in the colors and the greenery. It looks very spring to me. So I live in the country, so we have lots of types of greens in our trees and in the grasses and the moss. So it's really nice to be able to put that in our arrangements, the variety of color. Let's try the second one. Burlapfabric.com has sent me some goodies and I got the green, the white, and the large burlap ribbon all from them. I have some thrifted flowers. These are orange and white, but I'm going to change those out in a bit. This is a Dollar Tree sign, very pretty, and that is from this year. And then I have this egg wreath from Dollar Tree this year. I knew I had to have this. I knew I had to do something with it. Well, I got a little bit crazy and I broke it when I was taking the tag off. So it's easy to fix. I'm just using some masking tape, but you can use electric tape. You can use duct tape, whatever you have to just go over the place that it is broken. Twist it around and now it is good to go. It's strong, no problem. I'm gonna cut down here at, I think I have 12 inches, 
and I'm going to show you what we're going to do for this wreath. So this is burlap. It's not deco mesh, but we're going to use the same technique. I'm going to fold over about an inch here and then walk my fingers up to the end and the last inch I'm going to fold over and then pull into the center. It makes a cruffle just like when you're using deco mesh. This is the technique that we're going to use to cover the base of our egg. So I have I think 10 or 11 of these zip of these hmm, chenille ties. All you have to do is feed them through the outside ring, twist them around. I didn't think you wanted to see all of that. Then you're going to take one cruffle for each of these segments. So each of these little ties or chenille stems, I don't know why I cannot grasp the word pipe cleaner today. Maybe my medication. Who knows? I might need some more coffee. But this is what we're going to do. You're just going to continue all the way around. I use the outer rings for this because I want this to be larger. So I want it to be on the outside rings for that. If you alternate, it's going to make it appear a little bit smaller. And I want it to be as big as possible. I love this cream colored burlap. I thought this would be the perfect way to be a base on this beautiful egg wreath. I think you're going to like this one. So we're going to continue around just like this. And don't worry about where they overlap. We're going to adjust that in a minute and you'll be able to be sure that your entire frame is covered. And this does a really good job. If you wanted to save a little bit, you could probably do 10 inch um, little cruffles instead. 12 inch is what I went with and I'm very pleased with it. So here we go and this is how it looks. Go ahead once you've got those together and fix them so that they overlap each other in the right way to be able to cover your frame. And look at that coverage. Oh, this is going to be really nice. So I'm going to go ahead and start making the bundles of ribbon that are going to go in each one of those cruffles. So here you see me using some ribbon that I got on clearance at, I believe it was Michael's or maybe Joann's. We're going to do 10 inch strips. So this is a wired ribbon, really pretty. And I know that gray is a, a very popular color. And then we're going to do 10 inches of our burlap that is wired, that is white or cream, and then we're going to do the same thing with the beautiful green. So now we have three pieces and we're going to create stacks with these. This is easy to do. You, don't, you can choose any pattern that you like. You can put your plaid on the bottom, you can put your plaid in the middle, whatever you want to do. We're going to create an X and then a line straight down the middle. Pinch it up in the center and that is going to be our bundle. Now be sure you can use your little clips to hold it. I always do this. It just makes it an easier process. You can slant or dovetail your ends. I found that dovetailing the ends really gives it more, I guess, kind of volume when you are fluffing in the end and I really like that aspect. So just go ahead and dovetail or cut them at a slant. I wanted to show you on the first one how we do that and then pull those back apart. You can get an idea of how they're going to look. It's going to get a little crunched up when you put it down on your wreath and you'll see that. I'm going to show you how we do it. So I'm going to take that off. Remember your clip is on the front side. Push it down into the, the center and then tightly twist this in. You're going to continue all the way around the wreath in the same technique. Press it down into the center and twist it. It doesn't matter which way you lay this pattern and if your pattern is messed up, it doesn't matter. When you fluff it, you're not gonna be able to tell. Y'all, we had so much fun doing our little Q&A Saturday. I had a blast. I've been stuck in the bed with a back injury and I had so much fun. Thank you for everybody who showed up for that. Um, it just really, it made my day. It was a lot of fun. And we got to know each other. We did questions and answers. If you're not part of our YouTube family, consider subscribing. Checking out that community tab that's on my, my front page. And 
following along with us as we do our polls and daily questions and win prizes. We have a lot of fun doing that. Um, we've had a lot of winners and they're very happy. You know, they're reporting back saying they're happy with their packages and that makes me happy because I want everybody to have the ability to craft and to express themselves and have some joy in their life. And a little package is always fun. Okay, so you can see now I'm fluffing. I'm turning out all of those tails. I'm dividing, making sure all of my colors are represented and my patterns are represented. And it just makes a beautiful, beautiful base. Look at that. I am absolutely loving those colors together. Stunning. I just absolutely love it. I'm so glad I have ribbon left on each of those spools to do more projects. So you may see these colors again. Now you can see it's still shaped like an egg and I love that. We're gonna go ahead and take all of that extra stuff off the sign and we're gonna get it ready to attach to the wreath. So use your hot glue, put down your chenille stems or your pipe cleaners or your floor wire, whatever you wanna use, and a little glue and a little bit of paper. Once it is cooled, you can go ahead and center it where you want it on your wreath and then feed those wires through the form into the back. When you do this, be sure that you're not pulling it too tight because you will crush down your wreath and it's going to not be as pretty as it would if it looked as though it was floating on the top of the wreath. And that's kind of what you want it to look like. It's just very gently resting on the top. You don't want to squish anything down by doing it too aggressively. So then take the little tails of the ribbons that are nearby and you can use those to cover up the holes that are in your sign there and you want to fluff them out so that you can see everything because the ones underneath you can't see as well. I am pulling all the flowers off of their picks and this is kind of where I decide that the orange is not the best color and you'll see that I changed it to cream. I've cut down my wires because we won't be needing those anymore up there on the top. I don't recommend this type of a pipe cleaner. It's kind of a swirly pattern, but it's really hard to use the wire cutters and cut through the fabric part. That's what's sticking. The wires work, the fabric part does not. So here are my cream colored flowers. My kids are upstairs making noise. Y'all excuse that. I'm going to use my little creamy yellow and my white and just kind of alternate all the way around. And you see, I still have my egg shape, and that's so pretty. I love that. This would be maybe more of a farmhouse look, but I still think that I'm gonna make it look more cottagey, and you'll see that shortly. So of course, I'm gonna use my greenery. I'm not gonna throw that away. You know, that part of the rustic in me is going to remain that way. That's just who I am. And I'm gonna start adding down my flowers now right where our ties or our twists are in the center of those floral bundles is where we're going to place these down you're not going to see it at all and they just fit these these daisies just fit nicely in the cup of those bundles i love that and we're going to make a little bigger leaf to go on the bottom part and it's going to go underneath the sign so we don't want to have too much going on up top and then nothing on the bottom I'm going to add some hot glue, of course, to hold these things in place. I'm gonna lift up on it a little bit so that my flower doesn't disappear under the sign. I can still see the bunny, so I'm happy about that. And again, move things around where you like them once you get your flowers in there because they are gonna cover up some of the arrangement. And thankfully, we can move those wires and those uh, ribbons around because they are not glued down. They're just twisted down right and this is how it looks so far so this would be actually perfect if you wanted farmhouse but I'm gonna make it a little more cottagey I'm gonna add some beautiful little I think these are ranunculus and they are a peachy color which I am loving this spring y'all know that we've talked about it I am loving this color this spring and it looks beautiful with this pale sweet yellow just it's just a buttery soft yellow and I'm just gonna add these here and there. There is no rhyme or reason. I'm definitely gonna take the greenery that came with the picks and I'm gonna use that as well. Doing this, in my opinion, adds more of a cottagey look. We're adding that look as if it was actually picked 
from a garden and brought into your home. And of course, when you do that, you are bringing in the greenery that goes along with it, right? Of course. So we're just gonna keep doing that all the way around where it looks like I want it to go. I didn't do a pattern with the placement of these little flowers and the greenery. I wanted it to look a little more wild and doing that without a pattern kind of does that. Just here and there. I'm going to continue along like that. So what colors are you doing for Easter this year? I know a lot of people in my polls said that they love purple, so I'm very happy to say that I will be doing some purple arrangements, some purple mm, creations. We'll just put it that way. I definitely have the supplies on hand and I am ready to go with that. We're going to continue to place those here and there. And I think that looks so pretty and sweet. Dollar Tree has several different versions of that sign. They have one I think that says blessed. Um, they may have one that says Easter. I'm not sure. Love and I'm not sure what the other one is. But there's at least three of them. So if you don't find this one, go ahead and just grab another one. Just go with whatever colors are in that one. Now that is sweet. That is a cottage creation if I've ever seen one. So I found this little shovel and it had some other things on it which I've taken off already. And I'm going to give it a little makeover. It's approximately 16 or 17 inches long. You can use the little, little shovels at the Dollar Tree. If they have started putting out their summer stuff yet, you can definitely use something like that. But if you decide to use something thrifted, I'm going to show you how we can take it apart and fix it up. Mine happens to have two screws that are holding the shovel head onto the wooden handle. So I'm just going to undo them and remove them. There was no glue there. And I am going to cover up the holes that are in the handle. I'm just using some of this lightweight spackling that is from the Dollar Tree. Very easy to use, or should I say the dollar and a quarter tree. Just going to go over all those little holes. If you have any cracks or problems with your shovel, you can go ahead and fill those in, let it dry, and then sand it off so that you don't, you know, have bumps and stuff. You'll have a good smooth surface to work with. All right, so I'm going to take a warmer green paint and cover up this bluish paint. I prefer warmer colors, so no matter what time of year, I'm always going to go toward the warmer tones for me personally that is so I'm just gonna take this chalk paint and go all over here I only used one coat be sure that you get the areas that you don't necessarily see so I'm going where the it was loose from the handle and the the stick part of the shovel it was loose so I went ahead and took it apart sanded it down and I'm putting a little glue there and then protect your eyes and nose because there's some rust on here and you can sand this off. Go ahead and start sanding it. Now the reason I did this is because the paint is raised and I wanted to make it kind of disappear. After I've wiped it down with the baby wipe and gotten all that stuff off of it, I'm going to cover it with this, I think this is elephant gray or a medium gray chalk paint. I didn't want to do the galvanized look and I think that this will be absolutely fine. My shovel was gray when I got it. So it's going to take two coats for me on this to get it to cover up completely and I've done it kind of thickly and let it dry completely in between. I'm going to use wood glue to reattach the handle to the pole part and when you use wood glue you can go ahead and use some type of a stick or whatever to make sure that you cover all your surfaces on the inside so it doesn't come off. That's what I'm doing. I've got to be sure to line this up correctly so that I have my my stem part of the handle right in the center because we have to put this back on right now I don't want to have a spotless shovel so we're going to use a little bit of this antiquing wax to go over all of the edges and the sides of this shovel head I'm just making it look like it would have been dirty it would have been rusty it would have been well loved so I'm making it look like that by using antiquing wax. I mean it is antiquing wax so we're going to make it appear old. 
I don't want to have a bunch of brush strokes in there, so I'm just taking a, um, an old sock that I have and I'm just wiping it back some. I'm going to make sure that I line the holes up correctly with the shovel head and push it straight into there. And then I'll be able to reattach my screws to hold it in place. So it's Mardi Gras holiday. Who else has their kids at home right now? Isn't it fun working with your kids stomping above you and yelling in the other room? Oh, it's real life, people. It's real life. All right. So I am going to, of course, rust the screws also. We're going to make those look rusty and old. And then also where it attaches to the, I guess I'm going to say handle. I think I've called that stick part a billion things. <laughs> what do you call it? All right. I'm going to keep going around, going to make it look like it's been used, like dirty hands have touched it. And what do you think? I think I achieved that look. Now we're going to put some flowers on it. All of these pieces are thrifted. I'm going to take all of these little pieces and bits and make a pretty little arrangement. I kept you girls in mind when I made this arrangement because that is a lavender or a purplish colored bundle of flowers that we're going to use for this arrangement. Your opinion does matter to me, so be sure to leave me a comment. What do you think about these DIYs? I'd love a thumbs up if you're enjoying the video. I'm just going to go ahead and stack these together in any way that I think they would look great. In any way I think that they would look balanced, but of course maintaining a cottage style. So we don't have a pattern here. I'm just kind of poking things here and there, moving it around until I get it where I like it. And I'm just holding the base of it so that I can add my pieces together and it's going to form somewhat of a swag. So you have some going downward, some going upward. And they meet in the middle. I'm making sure that I get all of my pieces of stem in there. And I'm going to use a zip tie to hold this together. This is the easiest way to do this rather than using floral wire. Everything would start to fall apart if you were trying to twist that end together. So now everything is tightly together. I have the opportunity to move some things around and get them where I think they look nice. I do this all the time and I do this constantly when I'm creating. Look how nicely that fits on the shovel. So I want the biggest part to face the head of the shovel and I'm going to use another zip tie to fasten it to the handle. Easy, easy, right? You can use flower scraps for this. Absolutely use your scraps. So this is some thrifted ribbon that I have and I got this the same time that I got the plaid that we used in our first arrangement or our first wreath. Just some examples of other ribbons that you can use but I will be using this one from Dollar Tree. I'm going to cut one 8 inch piece, 18 inch piece and then I'm going to cut two of this little, it's actually like a, it's a picket fence, like a garden scene with some flowers growing up beside it, almost like morning glories. It's really pretty. I'll be sad when it's all gone. Okay, so this is the bow that we're going to make. Very simple. You could see what I was doing there. If you missed it while I was running my mouth, no worries because I'm going to show you how to do it again on the next ribbon. Now this one's wired, but these are not. However, it's a very good quality ribbon and it is going to hold its shape without collapsing and I love that. You can see how we're making the ribbon now, how I'm adjusting it, and how long the tails are is going to definitely correlate with how big the loops are on the top. The idea is to make these loops a little bit smaller than what's on the burlap behind it and then on the next bow that we do, it's going to be even smaller. So this is like a stacked bow. Very easy to use if you like somewhat of a bulky bow but you just don't have maybe the skills that you are comfortable with in making a bigger bow. So you'll see momentarily that you're going to get a nice impact from this bow. It's super easy to make. This time I'm just going to use some jute. Now I think I said in a previous video I'm finally very satisfied with some jute that I received and I actually got it from Goodwill, which is great because I got it cheap. However, I don't know where it came from because there was no label on it, but it is strong, very strong. And that's what you need when you're bow making if you're going to use jute because it will snap and break and then your bow will fall apart. 
but I'm happy with this. Sorry that I can't share where it came from. Okay, so now we're going to fluff the bow. I have small hands and it makes it convenient when I um, are, am fluffing the bows because I can just put my finger down in the loops of even the smaller bows and pull those out and twist them around to get them in the shape that I like. Use your fingers and do the best you can. So you can see how big and pretty this bow looks. I mean, you know, it's a smaller, it's in a smaller scale, but how big and pretty it will be for the project that it's on. I don't know why my camera went yellow there, y'all. Excuse that. I'm not sure what happened. Everything looks kind of sickly. Okay, now back to normal. I'm going to put the bow on, flip it over, because when we hang this, we want the shovel head to be downward and the handle to be upward. That's why I put the bow on in this direction. Cut that off. You can use a little hot glue if you're worried about it moving, but I assure you the flowers are going to hold it in place. And this is how it is going to look. Do the same thing that I tell you on every project. Look at it from all sides. Fluff that bow, move the tails around, trim where you need to trim. And then if you see any gaps, by all means, feel free to go ahead and fill that in with a little something. Look at that, isn't it pretty? We still need a way to hang it, unless you're gonna hang it off of the handle, which I don't really recommend. So I'm gonna take some more of that jute and make a simple hanger. You can see how I'm doing it here. Make a loop, wrap the ends around, tie it, slip the knot down, and then you have a loop. All you have to do is trim off the tails to whatever length you like, and then we're gonna add it to the handle part of this beautiful little arrangement. Protect your fingers, of course. And then when you turn it over, look at that, isn't it cute? Here is our first project. It's the beautiful hop wreath. It got a little squished again. I need to go fluff it again. But this is the first wreath. I used a bunch of thrifted items. I only spent $1 on this wreath. And that was for the sign. Well, $1.25. This is the third project, and it is a thrift flip. Everything in that thrift flip I already had, so it cost me nothing. And then this beautiful wreath cost me $2.50 to make. I love these. These are very cottagey to me. What do you think? Do you think that these are representative of cottage style? We're going to start off with a Dollar Tree placemat. And then I have two printouts, and I've got the links in the description box below for you, of bees and honey. These are the two white 8x10 frames from Dollar Tree. Start by taking off the backing and the paper that's on the inside. You can leave the glass in. And we're going to use the back of this just to show you that you can get two backings from this. We're going to fold it in half. I creased it with my finger. Now I'm going to use my little Cricut tool and just press it down. This is going to make a nice little seam and a line so we can cut it right down the middle. Get some good sharp scissors and cut right through it. Now this is not fabric, it's plastic. Just cut through there. And then I'm going to use my rotary tool to trim it down to make it the same size as the backing. All right, I'm going to use hot glue. You can use a couple of dots here or straight lines, whatever you choose to put this down. Now when I put this down, it didn't even cross my mind that this is like a mesh and then it would stick out. But you see how it comes out the top? You can rub that glue right off and it just completely disappears. It just becomes part of that mesh underneath and goes away. So you can see it just beads up. Just roll it with your finger and it'll come right off. But don't do that when it's super hot unless you get finger protectors on. You don't want to lose your fingerprints. Just comes off real easy. Okay, now it's invisible. You can barely even tell it was there. And it is securely on the backing of our frame. Now I'm going to take my two signs. I'm going to take the first one and you're going to try to aim for about a five by seven um, when you get done. That way you have plenty of border showing around the outside. 
I'm just kind of eyeballing it. I really didn't do like exact measurements. And then you can just use your top, your first picture to help measure your second picture. Now I'm just trying to figure out my center and I'm just gonna stick it down with some double stick tape. Simple, simple. Mod Podge would probably be too big of a mess here and this tape holds it beautifully where you have no wrinkles, no smudging, no smearing, or any other type of problem. And I did use an inkjet printer to print off these beautiful little printables. Y'all need to look at my Pinterest too because I have lots of free printables over there. Um, they're from other people. I didn't make the printables, but I am sharing them. So you can go to my Pinterest. You can find all those um, links in the description box below. So I'm going to put the back back on it. And look how perfect that is. Isn't that beautiful? It's like a double matted framed picture. So pretty. So I'm just running you back through how we do this with the second one. Same thing, trim it down. Doesn't have to be exact. And the good thing about these lines is you can kind of eyeball it to make sure that everything is lined up like it should be. Nice and straight. But you can use any type of backing that you like. I thought that this black and white was beautiful with the B prints. Isn't that gorgeous? So cute. Moving on to the next one, we're going to use one of these stacked book little decorations from a Dollar Tree. They're not put together very well, but you know, you can fix that if you want, or you can take the attitude that I had, and nobody's going to look at the bottom or back, so you can just leave it alone. I took the little sad ribbon off, but we are going to use it. And then I've got some more beautiful ribbon from Dollar Tree. Love the blue ribbon, I mean the bee ribbon, <laughs> the honeycomb, and then the gold I already had. That came from the thrift store, I believe. I'm using some plaster chalk paint, but you can use whatever color you like. I think the white's going to be pretty here. And then these little dippers, these little spoons that I got from Goodwill. And then these gorgeous yellow flowers, just because they coordinate. You can use whatever color you like. I'm trying to stick with my theme of black, yellow, gold, white, you know, for bees. And I think it's a beautiful transition from coming out of winter and attempting to have some type of a spring weather. I live in the south, so we get spring early here. We get a very short winter. So if you live in the south, this type of thing might be right up your alley. Or if you live up north and you're cold, this ought to warm you right up. So I'm just going to paint this, all the surfaces that I'll see, and I'm going to use the back part of this beautiful calendar from Dollar Tree and trim it down. You know, there's a little bitty ones and there's a larger one that's in the corner. I'm just using my little trimmer here. I've got something close to it in my Amazon store. You can find that link in the description box <laughs> if you are looking for something like this. Not the exact one, but something similar. I'm going to use my glue stick here to put this down on the box or the books, whichever one you want to call it. And you can stick this down any way you want. Use your double stick tape if that's what you have. Use your Mod Podge if that's what you have. This works fine for me. I'm just going to kind of pat it down with my hands in the spot that I lower than the middle because I want to put something on the top. And then I'm just using my brayer to press it down. But you can use whatever you want to make sure that it is firmly affixed to your surface. Now I have these manicure scissors that I use all the time in crafting for my little fussy cutting and I'm going to just use it to go down the centers where the separations in the books would be. Just to give it a little depth so that you can see that brown through there, it gives it a little shadow and makes it appear more like books stacked on top of one another. You certainly don't have to do that and if you just barely put any on like I did on this end, then you wouldn't have to work so hard like I'm doing now hindsight, right? <laughs> All right, so we're going to take this spoon and we're going to put some hot glue in it. Now, if you have yellow glue sticks or gold glue sticks, you could definitely use that, but I don't. So I'm going to make do with what I have. I'm going to add a big spoon full of what is going to be our honey on here, and I'm going to hold it upright so that it will form a drip. And you can see here that it's starting to drip. I have sped it up a little bit but it's starting to drip. Watch your fingers. It's hot. Let it drip down a little bit. Give it a second to, to kind of firm up and then sit it down. Let it dry the rest of the way. And look at that. Perfect. 
Now we're going to go on to our book while that is sitting up and I'm just taking the side of the lid of a pencil and going across dragging it across the edge of the books to make it look like pages. Make it a little more realistic I think. And then the same thing on this side just drag it across back and forth. And then after you've gotten that done, you can just take your fingers or the side of your hand and just smear it just a little bit. And you see, it kind of looks like pages, right? Now, I'm attempting to make a glaze here. I'm using some gloss Mod Podge and some King's Gold. I'm gonna shake them up. I'm gonna use more of that Mod Podge and just a little bit of that really strongly pigmented gold there gonna mix it up you can add some brown to it to make it look more like a the brown of honey whichever one you want to do but this was an experiment for me so I think in the end it turned out good mix it up really well and then I'm gonna use a fine little tip brush here to go just along all around where that hot glue is I'm not coloring my spoon with it because I want this to look like to some extent it should represent honey right it takes a few coats so that you don't have brush marks in here anymore, but be sure that you let it dry nicely between each coat. Then I'm going to, while it's drying, work on decorating the book stack. So the binders of the books need a little something. And rather than writing, I thought it would be nice to just use some decorations on the spines of the books. So that's what I'm doing here. No words, just decorations. I'm using double stick tape and then a length of my ribbon to go on the top and I'm just going to kind of alternate. I'm going to use the honeycomb on the top and then the next layer will be the bees. And there's definitely a pattern to these bees upright and upside down so just be, you might want to be mindful of that if in the end you find out that you put your bees on upside down after you've completed your work and then your heart is broken. Okay, so now we're down to the last layer and this is how it's gonna look and I, I like it so far sometimes you know you just got to keep going on something when you kind of hesitate just keep going with it and see what happens I mean it's crafting we make mistakes and we can fix things easily so if the edges hanging over a little bit bother you just take a little bit of your stick glue rub it on there and then press it down and hold it for a second and it will cup under for you so now the same two ribbons that I used before I'm going to cut same length and we're going to use that to go around the top of our box and I think I have a, about 18 inches of ribbon in this I think that's what it is and I still have some ribbon left over so I'm glad of that because I really really like this now I'm fiddling around here to try to decide what type of a knot I want or how I want this ribbon to lay so I've just decided to double knot the gold over the top of the the little bee ribbon and you can just twist those if they won't lay right use a little little dab of glue and then it will it'll stay just you know where you put it but I like it right around the top and I'm just gonna slant cut these ribbons I can't imagine trying to take the time to dovetail these they're just they're small ribbons I don't think it's necessary but you do whatever your little heart desires now those little tails are staying exactly where I put them and I'm going to add a flower because you've got to have flowers there, right, for bees? I could have used the little same flowers as on the box, but I just decided to use the roses. And you can see this is an example of how they turn out when you've had several layers of paint. I think it looks like it has a little honey on it, maybe mustard. Okay, so I'm just going to divide the bottom just a little bit so we can see both colors. I think it gives a nice little touch. And I've just tucked that honey spoon right underneath the knot. Look at it from all your little angles and decide what else you need. I wanted to trim this stem a little bit and then make a few more little additions. You could also use something like a, if you had like a little a jeweled bee or if you had a button with the bee on it, that would be really precious here if you wanted to try that. I'm just gonna use the head off of one of the other little roses and I'm going to tuck that right under that knot and it will also help hold that spoon handle in place. So now 
Now they're all secure. What do you think about it? I really like this one. So cute, and I've never done a book stack before as a project, so this is my first time. What do you think? I think it looks pretty good. For the next one, I'm going to use one of these little printouts. I will link the video below where I made these. I'm going to use some glossy Mod Podge. I'm going to use some foam, a little watering can, some of these little flowers, and some greenery. Use whatever you like. So this is printed on tissue paper. All you have to do is just cut this out. You don't have to cut it real close because you're not going to see that because the backing is white and so is the can. I'm going to add my Mod Podge down in the area that I will be adding my little beehive or my skip, whichever one this is, since it has a little door on it. Whoops. Okay. Now I'm going to gently press this in place. This is tissue paper, so keep in mind it is fragile. You don't want to be too rough with this. And then I'm going to help lay my edges down in the, the um, Mod Podge that's already there by just taking that same brush and just going over the top. Now you can see that I'm taking this flat brush and tapping it into the cracks and the, the details in that can. I like to do this because this makes it look more like it is hand painted. And then same thing here. If you need to add a little more Mod Podge, just add it on there. You could use school glue also if you would like, but I'm not sure that it has a glossy finish. And like I said, the can has an enamel look, so I want this to kind of blend in. And this is how it looks. Look, my baby cane. He wanted to put his hand in there, so he's giving me some love. Got to stop for the love, right? All right. A little more Mod Podge on there after it dries, just to keep everything secure and make sure everything is blended in nicely. I love this. These are so sweet. I mean, not if you get stung, but really, if you if you think about their sense of community and, and the way they protect one another, it's just a beautiful thing. There you go. Be sure to follow me on my social media, on Pinterest, Instagram, and Twitter. All right, so now all you have to do is start adding in your florals. I lost a piece of my footage. I don't know what happened. Can't find it. The camera ate it. So I'll tell you what I did briefly. If you imagine a star shape, right in the center of that star is where I placed my tallest greenery pick. And then I made points out from that with greenery. And then working my way upward, I added in my little flower picks. And I did that all the way around. And now what you're seeing me do is just going back in there with the extra little pieces and adding those in you know how I do this. I use pretty much the same te technique every time, and I have lots of videos where I do floral arrangements and things like that. So be sure you go, you know, check those out. Go to my videos and find the ones that have floral, floral arranging, and you can find some, some details, some better details on that. Again, I'm sorry about that. It, it's just gone. I don't know. It's gone. But now I'm just filling it out. Um, one thing I always do is turn my project from side to side. Um, you could use a turntable if that's helpful to do that. And just go round and round. Make sure you don't have any foam showing. Make sure everything is balanced and pretty. And I love the look of this white and green. It's so simple and cottagey to me. And I think it's just beautiful for springtime. Very simple and pretty. And you can use any type of greenery you have. You can use thrifted stuff. You can pull it off of other things that you have and use it again. I mean, repurpose your things. Really stretch your dollar. Okay, now I'm going to take three pieces of jute. And these are about two feet long, these stretches, these pieces. I get my jute from the Dollar Tree, but I do thrift it. When I see it, I pick it up because I use it a lot. And I'm going to pull it up here around right under the lip. And I'm going to give it a tie. And then you can keep your things from slipping around if you just use a little bit of hot glue under the knot. It won't slide down, especially when you have those cans that you get from Dollar Tree. Those little planters that are silver with the rope on them, they taper downward. So if you tie anything around the top, it's going to fall unless you add a little glue. So just keep that in mind. I'm just tying a very simple bow here, and I'm going to trim off my ends. 
for a little extra embellishment on the top. And now I'm going to add my other honey spoon. Hot glue. I'm going to place it kind of behind the bow and then pull my bow up and then separate those little layers of the strings. This adds that little rustic touch that I love to my cottage pieces. And I think it is just adorable. What do you think? Is this something you might try? If you can't find the exact thing, you can always find something similar. This shouldn't even be a DIY, but I did do it myself, so I guess it qualifies. So these little candles came from Dollar Tree. I grabbed them knowing I could use them for these bee projects. Take a little piece of ribbon and go around the neck of each one of these. On this one, I'm going to use the gold and I'm going to use that black and white that I already had. How about that? I'm going to wrap this one around and I'm going to tie it very simply. You can use a dot of glue to hold that there in place if you need to and then tie a double knot. I'm going to tuck underneath a little piece of greenery. You can go ahead and use the same that you used in the, the planter or the, um, the watering can if that's what you want to do. But I thought this yellow would be really pretty with this gold ribbon. So I just went ahead and used it. It's just a scrap. I keep all my little scraps and baskets and bowls and I just use them again. And I'm just tying two bows, one on top of the other one. Because they're so small, I couldn't tie them all at once. So I just tied them one on top of the other, and they're overlapping. See how that's sticking out? All you got to do is use a little drop of hot glue under the end, and it'll glue straight down. Look at that. And there's the third one. I want you to try these projects. I believe in you. I know that you can do it. I've got lots of crafty people in my community, and I'm getting so much wonderful feedback about inspiration, that you're feeling inspired, that you're crafting. Maybe you haven't crafted in a while, and you're dragging your stuff back out, and you're getting back into it. There's something to me so relaxing and joyous about crafting and be in, just being expressive through your own crafting. You don't have to be just like anybody else. You don't have to do just like everybody else. If you're enjoying the content, please consider subscribing. I promise you will not regret it. Okay, we're gonna need some Waverly chalk paint and a chippy brush. I have my Farm Fresh calendar that my sister picked up for me, and we're gonna use the August 2022 artwork. I'm gonna use this puzzle box. It was a puzzle or a dress-up girl box. I get these all the time at the thrift store, so you're probably going to find something like it, but they make the perfect shadow boxes, and they're lightweight and a good big size. So we're going to start off by removing our calendar page without tearing it, so I'm just trying to crease it a little bit, and then I decided to take my metal ruler's edge and just cut right through the page so that I could pull it off a little bit better. It pretty much scores it, makes a nice clean line. Even with that, my picture is a little too big, so I'm just going to take my metal ruler and my rotary tool and just trim that down. And I do make a little trim on the top and on the bottom so that I get a nice fit on the inside. Okay, so you see that the back of the page has black writing. If you use a color in the background that is like a gray or a black, it's going to make that disappear. So that's what I'm doing here. But I'm not going to go all the way to the outside because I want this to have white on the parts that are visible. So I'm just going to take my gray paint, just one sloppy, sloppy coat here. You don't have to be perfect with it. And then once it dries, I'm going to go ahead and take the white paint and I'm just going to give it kind of a, a dry brushed effect. I like the little wood showing through the paint and so that's what you see me doing here. You just kind of tap off the paint. I'm just using what's in the lid to just brush over here. I'm going to use the same technique on the edges of the box. And then when I get to the inside, I'm going to make the coat a little bit thicker. You can see right here what we're doing. I want to take this opportunity to invite you all to come over to my community tab. When you're subscribed, you'll be able to... Um, participate with that. Come to my community tab and just chat with us, visit with us, do the polls that we're doing um, during the week, 
and then on Fridays we do drawings for free packages of goodies. And I think everybody's having a lot of fun. I know I am getting to know everybody better. So you can see here how I'm making this thicker because you'll be able to see it. Now we're going to put our calendar down. I've got my gray in the middle and my white border and I'm just going to use a glue stick to put this down. But you can use whatever technique you like as far as gluing it down. You could even use some double stick tape if that's what you got available. You can use Mod Podge, whatever you have. So I'm just going to put this all over the gray section and right on the edge of the white so that everything sticks down nicely. And you can see how it kind of blends into the background now to look like one big picture. I'm going to take my little Mod Podge tool here, little scraper tool or squeegee tool, and just working a little bit from the inside to the outside so that I can press out any bubbles that may be in there. Inevitably, bubbles will pop up. Just do your best. Do your best with them, um, you know, depending on what you have, you may be able to lift them up a little and press them out. Now I found this at, I think it was dirt cheap, and it's just some paper. You can see it's just some paper here. They have theirs um, as a, like a table runner, use it for that. But it fits nicely on the back here. It's a little overlap, but that's fine. And from now on, I'll be using this to back my projects that they will look nice and neat on the back because this is kind of nasty looking. I want it to be pretty from all angles. So I'm just using hot glue, but you can use whatever you want to use to stick yours down. This makes it quick and it makes a nice clean, clean look. I'm just pressing this down on the edges because I'll be using my sanding block in just a moment to, um, to sand that off. So continuing around the box, I'm just going to work quickly so that my glue doesn't lift away. And it will. If you leave too much time, it won't stick. So just be careful and continuing to crease around the edges until I get the entire thing done. This last little part, you have to turn your, um, your glue gun sideways and then put it right into that crack. But it works. Then my foam sanding blocks, which I love. I love these things. I get them from Dollar Tree or Dollar and a Quarter Tree, as I like to say. And then you can see here, it just cuts right through that paper. It just takes it right off. Now, if you don't have this paper, you can't find it, not a big deal. Get that brown, I think it's postage paper. You can get it on a big roll at the Dollar Tree and you can use it, cut it down and use it for the back of your projects. It works really good. You could even, if you wanted to be fancy, use some maybe floral or decorative crafting paper. I think they come in 12 by 12. So, you know, if you've got anything smaller than that, it would work perfectly for that. Especially if you used to maybe scrapbook and you don't anymore, there's an idea for you. You can use those supplies. Okay, so you can see here, I just have a little bit I need to pull off where my glue overlapped. But otherwise, it looks nice, right? Yep, so now we need a hanger in case we want to hang it rather than having it sit up. But it will sit nice. Um, you'll see at the end when I do my final reveal, you'll see that I have mine showcased um, sitting up. But you can do this to hang it. I want to just give you that option. This makes a really easy hanger. Again, it gives you a very neat backing in case you wanted to give it as a gift or, you know, you just want it to look nice in your home. Make sure it's all stuck down good. Take off my little spider webs from the glue gun. And then you can see how it would look. And there's our beautiful little shadow box B artwork. I love this. A little pewter tray or a little dish, little trinket dish. You can see what's on the back. I got it at the thrift store and it needs a little love and I know exactly what I want to do to it. Always start by cleaning your supplies that you get from the Dollar Tree and then from any place really if you think that you're going to be painting it because you don't want to leave little residue of wax and things like that, which is what was on here. So maybe somebody used it as a candle holder but they hid the beautiful bee. So we're gonna do something better to it. And I'm just using a little wipe here, it's say an alcohol wipe, and I'm just gonna use it and rub off that tag too. I'm gonna to use some satin blossom white Rust-Oleum paint and spray it down outside and give it two good coats. And so this is how it looks. 
The back, I don't like so much. I think I'm gonna paint it black, but I know around the edges I'm gonna use black. I tried a marker originally and the marker looked awful, so I touched it up and then going back over it with a makeup sponge. So I'm just gonna get some black chalkboard paint. I think I got it from the Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna go around the edge here with my makeup sponge, just tapping it off a little bit so that it doesn't leave any run over on the sides there and onto the top because I want it to look nice and clean. This is so easy. This was easier than using a marker, so I do recommend using this technique if you wanna try to do the enamel look. I think this is cute. I love this little bee dish. All right, so after I do that, I do go ahead and paint the back and then I allow it to dry. See there? Nice, that looks better. Now I'm gonna take my antiquing wax here and a chippy brush. I'm gonna tap off a lot of that. And then I'm going to focus in the crevices around this bee dish. Now, like all the indentions and the, um, you know, the outline, I guess I should say, of this bee. I wanna work that in there because I want to leave some shadow and some dimension that you don't otherwise see in the dish as we had it originally, but you can leave it that way. So I'm just wiping it back a little bit, and that's just a dry sock that I'm repurposing that didn't have a match. You know, the dryer likes to eat those things. And then I'm just gonna tap some down in there and lightly rub back over until I get the finish that I like. The idea is not to have the entire dish looking antique, but rather to have the indention shown up. This beautiful little, I guess this is a vase. I found it at Dollar Tree, so pretty. I took the little embellishment off. This is a little thrifted cork light, but you can use any type of fairy lights that you have. Doesn't have to be this. I'm gonna use a little wood bead. I have a little, um, I guess it's a candle holder that's gonna help me hold things in place while I work. I'm gonna use some jute, and this is some thick jute. I'm going to sit it down in there and protect my fingers, and we're gonna begin to make a top for this so that it doesn't look like a glass vase anymore. So I'm just putting my protected finger in the center and then just kind of working around, adding the glue where I need it. It looks kind of oval right now, but you know, it's fixed. In the end, it's fixed. You can overlap it. You can make this as thick as you want to make it. And I do actually, after I get it wrapped around as flat as I can get it on the flat part, I do go over that little ridged area there and then onto the part that goes down that would be like the base area. It's just a, maybe a couple of centimeters, but I do wrap that up as well because this will look more like a topper than just you know, a little bit of rope wound up on the bottom. You can see how I went over the edges, like that. And you can just wipe off some of that glue. It's gonna come out of your jute, just wipe it off. It's real easy to remove. Just wanna make it look nice and neat. Then I'm gonna take my bead and put it in the center. This is how it's looking so far. I love that the amber color of this vase and it just looks like it reminds me of like a beehive so i thought this is definitely what i want to use it for so i'm also going to do this area and cover that completely up and this is easy to do i should have been protecting my fingers so i would be a good example for everybody but uh, i was running with the you know how it is when you get that little spark and you just you get the ideas running and, and you just go for it. That's kind of what I was doing here with this one. So once you get enough on there, you can trim it off. You don't want to cover the lip because it might not sit flat. Again, with our antiquing wax, I'm going to add a little bit there on the bottom and just kind of take a very stiff, also like a chippy brush, but it's a, um, it's a stencil brush. And I'm gonna use a little bit at a time to build up the color that I want. I want the color to match sort of what's going on in the beehive um, as far as the, the depth of the tone. 
I don't want to get it super dark and if I used a regular paintbrush and just went full force it would turn this a waxy brown color and that is not what I'm going for. I just want it to look as though it is aged and I want it to blend nicely with what is going on in the glass. So we're going to go down to the bottom or what used to be the top and work on that too. Just going back and forth and stippling and that glue is really holding well on this glass. And so this is the color I think I like. Very pretty. But you can continue to add as much as you want for this. And I did see one of these little vases in Dollar Tree a few days ago, so you can find them. So now the idea here, I'm going to use just a tiny bit of glue in the opening to hold down my little control so that it stays in place when I put it on the base that I've created. So you can use a little piece of wood, a little round wood. You could sit it back in that little vase or candle holder over there if you'd like. You can use it just like this, and that just gives you an idea how that would look. Or you can use like a, a candle topper, like an um, old candle topper, topper <laughs> or a jar top, like a jar lid. And I really like this aged one. This is one that's been through the dishwasher a few times and the edges are very aged but it doesn't have the color that I want. So in order to give it a more rustic or a more aged look, I'm gonna take that same antiquing wax and I'm gonna go around all of the edge, get in every one of those little cracks there, every one of those little indentions, right down into the lip where it curls over and then all over the top. You can let your wax sit after you get it on there and let it dry a little bit and then wipe it back. And that will give you a little more of an aged look. And if you like this look, you certainly don't have to wipe it back at all, but you will need to let it dry before you continue with your project. But for purposes of the video, so I can help you to understand, I am going to wipe this back and leave See how it sinks down into the indentions? I love that. I just, I love that. Even though I'm transitioning more to a cottage look, I, I have to have some rustic in there somewhere. How adorable is this? Is that not the cutest thing? I believe in you. I really do. And I know that you could do something like this and it'll be so amazing. Here are some of the things that we did in the last B video along with some of the things that we did in this B video so that you can see they work really well together. Y'all keep in mind my goal is 15,000 subscribers by August the 1st so if you're watching this video and you really love budget-friendly DIYs and you like the style in this video and the links that I will be leaving for you please consider subscribing and joining the family and helping me on my goal. I found I this gorgeous that. little window like frame at Goodwill. Unfortunately, they won't let me record in Goodwill because it's the Goodwill bins, so we're not allowed to do that for privacy reasons, so I'm just going to get right on into what we're making today. I've been redoing some of the decor in my bedroom to make it more of a cottagey look, and I thought this would be perfect on a display wall. And I'm going to start off with some chalk paint. You can use whatever paint you have. I'm using a chippy brush, and I'm just kind of slathering this on here. I don't want full coverage. I want this to be rustic because no matter how much my style changes, I just don't think you can knock the rustic out of me. So I'm going to keep putting this on here and I'm just showing you how I apply it. I'm just dragging it back and forth. I'm letting it be lighter in some areas. If you feel like when you do this that your coverage is just a little bit too heavy, do not be concerned about that because I'm going to show you how to fix it. We're going to chip it up in just a bit and make it our own. Now be sure that when you're doing this, you get around the corners and I want to get right inside of this frame as well. All those little inside corners and nooks and crannies need to be covered in the white. Now I'm going to take a very rough grit sandpaper and just start making notches and splintered looks and just grooves all into the paint. It just makes it look old and rustic. You can see how I'm doing it. I'm just dragging it back and forth on that paint and it's just pulling bits and pieces of the paint off. 
any of the areas where the bars cross, the corners, things like that, go ahead and work on those spots. Any area that would normally get a lot of wear, you want to be sure that you are really working on those pieces. Just like on this. You could use a hand sander if you needed to, if you wanted to. But just be very careful because they have a tendency to take a lot more off than we intend. See how I'm getting around the corners? You can get an idea here of how it looks. Now I want to put a hook on top because I decided that I wanted to hang a wreath on it. So I'm just taking this little hook, which later on I do paint gray. I'm just going to try to make a little pilot hole in there. I'm just going to get a little hole started and then just like that and right in the center. And then I'm just going to twist this down in here until it is flush. And there you go. I'm going to use this blessed sign that I found and this wreath that is underneath this is a grapevine wreath showing you the measurements here so you'll know if you want to use something that's comparable to it. I love how round this wreath was. A lot of times when I find them they're kind of oval shaped or stretched out but this one was really nice. Alright so this is going to be super rustic and super easy really fast to do. I'm just going to take some of my jute cord here and I'm going to go around like the corner area of the frame and then Pull it behind the wreath and tie it off. This is an easy step to do if you can just not be like me, fumble fingers over here. Tie it in a double knot, tie it in a triple knot, add a little hot glue if you want so everything stays in place. But we want this jute to show. So this is going to be an important part of the wreath because it's going to hold it in place and it's going to have a design function because it's going to give us a very pretty rustic or cottagey look as well. I think sometimes cottage and rustic kind of blend over into each other. What do you think? I know that seems to be more of my style and I think that they look really good together. So I'm going to just kind of wrap this around to the back and I've decided that rather than putting it in the corner of the lower part, I'm going to put it in the top part. You can see what I mean. It's above the corner there. I made sure that when I did this that I started off by hanging it first to make sure that I had a nice straight line and that my wreath was exactly where it wanted to be. And then I went ahead and tied both sides down. And there's a hanger already on this wreath right here in the center and that's kind of what I used to go by to make sure that I had everything lined up the way that I wanted it to be. You can certainly use any type of artwork that you find, any type of an open frame and layer it on top of a wreath and it's a very pretty um, textural look. Because there's not going to be a lot going on in this wreath as far as I'm not putting a bow on it, I won't be putting any flowers on it, I just want the wood, the vine, and then the metal texture to show in this. And you can see I have it pretty much centered here. So the next part is super easy. You're just going to do the same thing in this corner and the same thing in the other corner. And there you go. That's how that one looks. It's ready to hang. I'm going to use this magazine rack. I love the bones of it. I love this texture on the side, these little panels. We're going to plug these off, so don't worry about it. They did come from the thrift store without any plugs, but I happen to have found at a different time some wood plugs. How about that? You never know what you might find in the thrift store. I've hammered those in. We're not worried about the little dented areas because we're going to fix it. I'm going to take my matte Mod Podge and then give it two good coats outside once it is completely dry. I'm going to bring it in and start laying on the paint. Now this is a dark, dark wine colored paint. And even with chalk paint, which is pretty thick, it took some work. You can see here that you can still see through it, but you're going to keep going. We're going to persevere. We're going to keep pushing on, cover everything, bottom, top, sides, legs, the spindles, handle, and then three coats later. Here's that beautiful rack, totally and perfectly cottage and going to look beautiful in my room. Wait to the end of the video when you see how I've styled it. All of these turned out really cute. I love this. I hope that you can find a magazine rack. I usually find them when I'm there. 
I'm going to take this cute little bonnet, this little straw hat. I've been trying to collect these to hang on my wall. This one had some damage, though. It was missing its band, but that's all right, because if you know me, you knew I was probably going to take it off anyway. I'm just going to use some of this thinner linen and cotton blend ribbon. I got mine from burlapfabric.com. And you can find those links below if you're looking for any. Uh, you know, just for your own preference. Do whatever you want. You can use Dollar Tree decorative ribbon. You can use Easter ribbon. You can use jute cord here. You could use rope or nautical rope. But I just love this cream colored neutral linen ribbon. So I'm going to use it to create a new hat band. Now, the hat top is tapered, so your ribbon is not going to lay completely flat. Do not let that bother you because I'm going to show you how to fix it. So once it is down, I'm going to take a ribbon that came off of another project that I did. I'll leave the link to that video in the description box below so that you can make it if you like it. I'm just going to repurpose this and I'm going to put it right on this hat. It is the perfect little cute addition to this hat. Isn't that very Pollyanna? Oh, just love it. Okay, so here's what you do. You're going to go up to the top where you don't have your glue. You're going to snip it, take a little bit of hot glue, and then overlap that little snip. That's going to make a little pleat or a little, little area where your ribbon is going to overlap slightly. It won't be noticed, and it's going to give you a better fit against the top of that hat or the crown of the hat, whatever you want to call it. And you can just continue around your hat and do this wherever you feel like you need to do it. I'm not going to sweat it. I'm not going to do too much here. All right. So here we are with the before and the after of our hat. Project number five. This one is probably not completely what your idea of a thrift flip would be, but it is for me, and I'll show you why. So here is this beautiful picture. It is in a green color. I traded somebody some books for this uh, at Goodwill. And that was fun because I really wanted it and she wanted the books. I'm going to take two picks of thrifted greenery and this beautiful fall pick. I think these are our peonies. Are these peonies? I think they are. Um, I'm going to cut these off. Do not be alarmed by the clashing of the colors because I realize there are fall leaves on here and it is a very pretty Eastery green on that picture. We're going to fix that and I'm going to show you how. So just continue to cut these down. Clip, clip, clip until everything is off. I'm leaving those stems a little bit long because I'll be using these in another project, I'm sure. So all you have to do is pull off the greenery from these leaves. They slide right off the stem and then what you're left with is a beautiful creamy peachy flower which is perfect really for any time of year. Very easy. Some of the picks on here have cream colored flowers which we're going to use and some of the picks that were on here had like a green color and we won't be needing those, so I'll put those aside for my fall projects. So anything that looks like fall, I'm peeling off. And this is what we have left. Aren't they pretty? Love these. So what you need to do with thrifted flowers is be sure that they're clean. Get the dust off of them. You can use a lint roller to clean them up. You can actually wash some of them in the sink with a little warm water and hang them upside down to dry. These were clean, so what I'm doing now is just using my hands to reform the petals. Closing it up, making it look beautiful. And there was a little bit of uh, like some glue on there and I got the glue off just to make them look beautiful because we want it to look high end. We, we don't necessarily need everybody to know that what we have in our home is a thrift flip, right? We don't have to tell them all of our secrets. So we're going to start off by taking, I think this is uh, maybe some boxwood. I got two of these and I was very happy. I am separating them so they're not squished anymore. A lot of times you're greenery is mashed together just pull those apart they don't grow mashed together in nature so let's just fix it and then once you get it in there how you like it I'm satisfied with that you can go ahead and start adding your florals if you like something simple you could leave it like that all right I'm gonna start with a big flower in the center a flower on the outside a flower on the other outside and so on and so on I'm going to have the playlist videos in the description box below, so be sure that you go check out everybody else's videos. And hey, in the comments, why don't you let me know where you're from? I would love to know. 
Come along with us and get inspired and maybe learn a few new things. We can save the planet one video at a time. That's right. We're going to repurpose things. That's good. Get in your, in your craft stash. You know, maybe you don't have a good thrift store or what you would call a good thrift store. Get into your craft stash. Go and find some things that you already had. Maybe you've got a wreath that you don't want to use anymore. Pull it apart. You can make a, another arrangement out of it. Okay, so now I'm going to use some of these Dollar Tree um, clovers that I had left over from some other projects. And it just shows you how easy it would be to turn this into something for maybe St. Patrick's Day if you wanted to. It's pretty much all green, right? Just put some of those picks in there and you'll be good to go. Now I added these in here and I didn't feel too bad about it because if, even though they weren't thrifted, I thought it was important to give you another idea. We want you to open your minds and think about ways that you can repurpose. And since I've already used this in another project, I'm using them again in this one. I'm just continuing around and making it look where uh, the way that I like for it to look. And then I remembered I had two of these beautiful peachy orange flowers left, these daisies. And I wanted to add those in here as well. And they really give it a nice pop without just jumping out at you. So I've just kind of put those across from each other if you look at it, you know, from the top. So this is what we have. And it looks so springy to me, doesn't it? It would be beautiful for Easter as well. Here is the overview of all the projects that we did. And I believe in you, and I think you can make some of these. They were very fast projects. I got all this squeezed into one video. What do you think? And guess what? Another surprise is every single thing that you see in this video is thrifted, except for the little clovers we put in that planter. My lights underneath are thrifted. The burlap runner is thrifted. My backdrop is, flip is thrifted. All of the projects are thrifted, the bunny, the spindles, the burlap wrap there, the, sh the shawl or the scarf, all of my little, little eggs and the planner and everything. Everything was thrifted. How about that? Thank you so much for stopping by and I'll see you again soon. Bye!